starts the Southern Maryland Guitar Guru Show, featuring Dan Harsha and Dan Allman. This week's show, we're highlighting the latest in music, life, and we culture. We through different eyes. Yo, 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 this is Dan Harsha, and this is the Guitar Gurus, and with me always is... Dan Alban here. How you doing tonight, bud? Excited to be here, brother, man. Happy, happy, happy. How are you? Dude, I'm doing fantastic as usual, man. We're in the studio. I'm ready to get the show going. It's just insane, man. A lot's happened since last week we've been in here, and I'm ready to talk about it and document it, man. Yeah. It was a big one last week, buddy. Yeah, man. Um, wow. We'll, we'll recap in just a second. <laughs> That's but I right. Want, I want to start off right now and just talk about your band show this past weekend over oh, there okay. in Calvert yeah. County, man. Yeah, we had a good time out there in Calvert uh, County at Anthony's for the hospice charity event. Played with a lot of great, talented people that day. Uh, you had the uh, Runaway Guns opening things up and Run Catch Rain, God Take Texas, uh, you know, Disappearing Ink from Baltimore, which is great. Right. And then, of course, you had us. Yeah, man. David and Dynamo. I, we I, raised a lot of yeah. money, man. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. Did you get a final figure? It was about $3,600. Wow. Their first time event. Nice, so man. So we're proud of them for putting that on. Thank, thank them so much for the hard work. Yeah, man. And, uh, That's good stuff. You came out and supported, and we had a good time, man. We really did. Yeah, man. I got out there in time to catch the God's Hate Texas, and then it rolled right into your band show, man. And yeah. I was like, wow, man. So I got a treat to see two great bands, man. Yeah, it was a good time, man. I wish I didn't have so much going on during the day, because I would love to catch the other two guys that were there, too, man. The Run, Catch, Rain. Yeah. I'm lucky I've seen them already, so I'm good. Right. But I wanted to see Runaway Guns, man. Hell yeah, man. So how was that? That was great. And that's Kevin Jones's band, right? Yeah, he's playing yeah. drums in that band. Yeah, Daniel Tellis playing guitar, and his dad on the upright, and just rocking the band. It's just all original. I, I really enjoyed the hell out of it. Wow, they were man. great. That's cool, man. Yeah. Well, you know, have, have to check them out, man. Yeah, we're gonna. I, I want to get Daniel on this show at some point. He's he's really good, man. Yeah, I need I need to reach out to Kevin too because I got something planned for him. I want to do. So Ooh. that's gonna be kind of cool. So maybe we'll work that out together. Yeah. I think I got a plan for that, man. So the audience, stay tuned. Runaway Guns. We're gonna try to make it happen. Yeah. Quite quickly. So. All right. So that that was cool, but your set. Let's talk about your set, man. I put it out there, a video of the first song. So that's going to be my bit now. Yeah. Every time I go see you guys play, I'm going to film the first song and put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's out there. I see the trend, yeah. So, so it was awesome. Um, I immediately saw how everything was set up, and I went, okay, I'm going to set to the to the right of the stage, or, yeah, your right of the stage. And I got to hear the whole show perfectly, and my ears weren't ringing, man. No, they weren't. So it was perfect, man. And y'all sounded great. Yeah, thank you. Uh, opened with an original, which was just really exciting. So it was just a great time to see everybody. And a lot of people came out to support. Um, I did something silly. What's like, that? I asked for, uh, you know, if, if you write a $100 check to hospice, we'll do a request. Right. And sure enough came through twice <laughs> so thank you to that individual that did that nice you know that's what it's all about well dude people were partying when i was there man uh, yeah, oh yeah dude there was a it was insane man there was a, a something happened where a lady got the she was partying hard and fell over or something man and i hope everything's okay with her man but she partied hard man yeah she when you're having a good it. time she, she was, was having a good it. time she was into it so yeah. god we, bless her and I hope we checked on her she was okay wow had a little tumble <laughs> hey, you know you're having a good time when you take a tumble that's right <laughs> dude i i need a drink man i've been talking for a couple minutes now yeah. man. hold on let me do this oh, that's yeah. how that works that's what's done <laughs> that's how we get through it. No, I'm just kidding. That's not how we get through it. <laughs> but it, it's nice to have it along for the ride. That's right, man. We, we're on the clock, so we get to drink, man. <laughs> this is the only gig where, where we're on the clock and we're encouraged to drink. I love it, man. It is I a great gig. It. <laughs> it's a fantastic gig to have. Right, man. Well, dude, let's, let's talk about last week's show real quick. Yeah. Dude, it was a huge, huge show. Um. 
the viewership was through the roof, man. Absolutely. Um, I've never seen anything like it before, and I want to thank all the new listeners and all the pat and all the current listeners because yep. that's awesome of you guys. It really brought a, t- a tear to my eye to see everybody <laughs> tuning in to see these guys. But yeah, of course we had Donovan Farrell on the show, Robbie Booth Band. Yep. He came on for his first time on the show. We got to talk to him and meet him and, and understand where he's coming from for music. Yeah. And I, I just want to say thanks, Donovan, for opening up, peeling back the curtain and, and giving us that information because you don't have to. You don't have he, to. But he more than well had, was welcome to come on and talk, talk, tell a story, and he did, man. Yep. So special thanks to Donovan. You came on. It was awesome. We'll have you back in the future, man. So thank you. Then after that, we had Chris Dean on. Past Guru Guest a bunch of times. He's been with us since the early, early days. That's right. Uh, we had him on to give us a Philip Michael Parsons update, General Chris Dean update. He was a fantastic guest. He, was, he came on, hit the points, and, man... Uh, the, the sky, I mean, the sky's the limit with that guy, man. I see nothing but positive things coming his way, man. Yeah, because he gets out there and grinds, man. He yeah, knows. He, he's doing it and he's loving it. You can just see the enjoyment, man, and the pictures yeah. and all the videos you see. That's he's doing what he loves, man. Yeah. And you can really hear it in his playing too. Right, right. It's stellar, <laughs> man. It's, it is great. The, the players that come on this show, man, they're all. Everybody's been a player, man. It's just hard to even pick favorites now, man. It's well, not yeah, there's, fair. There's no picking favorites because everybody just is doing it, man. Yeah, exactly, dude. But that was last week's show. Of course, we had Higgy on and Sean oh, from Standard yeah. Deals. Absolutely. They came on and did their deal. But, man, dude, we're that last week's show's viewership right now is 11, over 1,100 views. And that, that's, yeah. that's pretty good for the for a one week. Before. Less than a week. So. Yeah. The hats off to everybody, man. Yeah, that that's all because of you guys listening and supporting. Thank well, you so much for that. Yeah, man. The guitar gurus, man. We're, yeah. we're bringing the music to Southern <laughs> Maryland, man. We're giving y'all a chance to meet the local talent and, and really know them, man, because these guys are just like everyone else, man. They wake up, go to work, right, and then they do music on this after work because they love it. Yep. And uh, these guys are coming on and telling their stories, man. It's really cool. It's great, man. So, wow. That's last week's show. Yeah. <laughs> Tired 40, already, man. 42 was a doozy, man. Right. <laughs> mm. Okay. So, let's talk this week's show real quick. Yeah. We're going to set it up. Standard guest, David Higgins with the Southern Maryland Chronicle for Higgy on the Beat. That's we're gonna, right. We're going to get him cranking on the Ollie's Bar and Grill Soundstage phone system in just a moment. But we're going to get him on. We're going to do Higgy on the Beat find out what's fresh in Southern Maryland music this week and what kind of the other events are happening and then we'll talk sports just for, just for the good laugh. Yeah, <laughs> just for fun. Oh, and it's a doozy this week. <laughs> uh, then we're going to do the Spoons Meal Review. Nice. Talk about what we had today. I just put it out there online. Yep. Fantastic meal again to them. We'll talk to talk about that in a, when it comes up, but that's what that's on, that's on tap. Yeah. After that, we're going to get our good buddy Sean Kirkpatrick on. Sean in 60 seconds. Always crazy stories with him. Oh, he's always got a good, he's always got something good for us, man. So we'll have him on for Sean in 60 seconds. Love it. And, and Love it. Let's see how long he goes for. It. All right. How's that sound so far? Uh, that's a show in itself, buddy. That's the show. That's the standard <laughs> show. So if all else fails and no one ever wants to come on again, we always have those guys. Yeah. So that's, that's our standard show. <laughs> so for featured guests this week, we got two great ones, too, man. Yes, indeed. You up, guys ready for this? Yeah. Up first, in typical Southern Maryland guitar guru fashion, we're having a drum, a custom drum maker on. <laughs> yeah. Because we got to show the drummer some love, yeah, man. We do, man. We really do. And Mark Martinez, M Squared Custom Drums. What a fantastic company. Yep. We're going to talk to him see what's up with his drums his snare drums especially i love his snare drums they're they sound fantastic Mm. and we'll talk to him all about drums for guru first nice and what better way than to highlight another southern maryland company that's right supporting the southern maryland scene the community man right custom drum maker how blessed are we to have that right i mean i didn't know that that, you know what i mean that's awesome man and people you know it's cool we're gonna document it and talk about it that's right 
then we're going to um, talk the Guitar of the Week from Island Music this week. Sweet. And that's that beautiful candy apple red Gretsch I put out there. The pictures mm. are out there. And if you if you look at those pictures and don't think that's a pretty guitar, then I don't even know it's, I don't even know why you even play guitar. <laughs> that thing was awesome. And we're going to talk about that. Talk about my how I spent my weekend with it. Yep. And well, and then send everybody to the store to try it out. That's right. <laughs> and then and it's a super affordable model this week. Yeah. Really cool. Really cool, Gretsch man. I really loved having it. And she's smoking hot. That's right. Then we're going to do the fan favorite two for Tuesday shout outs. Yeah, buddy. What do you think about that? I love it. It's my favorite part of the show. Awesome. We got a great list this week, too. So it's happening. Yeah, buddy. Cool. Then after that, our final featured guest. He's a past guru guest. It's the Mitch. The it's Mitch. Jason Mitchell's coming back on the show tonight. We're going to check in with him and see what's been going on since early part of this year. I think he's been on, hasn't been on since April of February. It's been a long time. So we're going to have the Mitch back. See what's up in his world. And, dude, no one's de- dethroned his crown yet, man. Yeah. Dude, we'll, I can't. I can't. We're going to check in with we'll him. We'll get into sure, that. Make sure he's still mitching it up for us. But dude, I know he is. See, you, you know. I keep an eye on him, man. I know what he's up to. So. He's still just, he hasn't slowed down one bit. Yeah, and I got to check to see if he still wants to buy that pedal for me. Well, y'all can work that out. Well, he will. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's the return of the Mitch. That's Jason right. Mitchell coming on tonight. Right, dude. I'm excited, man. So, dude, what a fantastic show that is, man. That's a stellar lineup. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait to get into the interviews. That's awesome, dude. Well, dude, I'm going to um, crank up the Ollie's Barn Girl Soundstage yeah. phone system, and we'll get Higgy on for Higgy on the Beat. All right. David Higgins, Southern Maryland Chronicle, coming to you on the Southern Maryland Guitar Guru Show. Oh, it's ringing, dude. We're locking in the signal. Come on, Hickey. Uh, Listen to that solo. Uh-oh. This is Higgy. What's up? Oh, wow, Higgy. Yeah. We didn't know you were coming. <laughs> Dude, that's insane. But we saved the call. Yeah. Uh, I hit the wrong button first, and then it had you dialing back in, but it was making no sound. So I couldn't even see nothing. Like, it didn't even pop up on my phone. Wow. The technology. I, I thought you just had a flair for the dramatic. <laughs> this, this is why I need to move up to the Note 10. Yeah, man. Dude, you got, <laughs> dude I got my new phone pre-ordered, man. Ready to rock and roll. <laughs> I got to sell some advertising, then I can get it. There you go, dude. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So, dude, uh, we're here in the studio. Um, let's let's just jump right into it, man. What do you got for us this week? Well, how you doing, Mr. Alvin? Oh, I'm good. How are you, Mr. Higgins? I'm, I'm not bad. How you doing? Uh, I'm, I'm <laughs> doing great, buddy. <laughs> oh, last week I get yelled at because I introduced you. This week I get mad. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I see what's up. It's a no-win scenario. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. All right, good evening, Southern Maryland. I'm Dave Higgins for Higgy on the Beat, coming to you live from the Southern Maryland Chronicle newsroom. This weekend looks to be absolutely fall-like. We're going to be in the upper 70s, low 80s. The evenings are going to be in the mid-60s. So let's get started with your 10-ounce 12-pack sampler of what's on tap this weekend in Southern Maryland. On Friday at Snellman's Storage Shuck Shack in Hollywood, Maryland, 5 p.m., you got Joe Norris. At 7 p.m., you got Dylan Gavin at the Cal Thai Restaurant Sushi Bar in La Plata. At 9.30, Million Proof will be at Ape Hangers Bar and Grill in Bellout, Maryland. On Saturday, 11 a.m., some other bridges will be at the Arts Fest and Marie Gardens in Solomon's Island. At 4 p.m., Port of Leonardtown Winery, you have Eric Ray. The Lighthouse Dock Bar in Solomon's at 5.30, you have Sumner Hutchinson. At 7 p.m., Thomas Gabriel will be at Gilligan's Pier in Newburgh. At 9 p.m., Anthony's Bar and Grill, Dunkirk, you have Eyes of the South Rock Show with Crow Hunter, Indian Head, the Young Swains, and the Route 4 Band. On Sunday, back at Arts Fest at 1.15 p.m., you have Dave Norris. At 2 p.m., you have Folk Salad at Porter Leonard Town Winery. At the River on Cobb Island, you have Nightcap at 2 p.m., And at 3 p.m., you have the California Ramblers at Riverside Pub at Dennis Point in Drayden. 
The weekly music schedule is prepared by Lynn Ariel with permission given to the Chronicle to rep reprint it. And that's your 10-ounce 12-pack sampler for What's on Tap this weekend. Be sure to check out the entire local music schedule, which is released on Thursdays at 4 p.m. and shortly after on Facebook. Awesome. Uh, dude. Yeah, man. Route 4 band. Yeah. Route 4 band. Yeah. Let's give a shout out to those and guys. There's a, there's a big mix this weekend when I was looking at the schedule. Of course, you got, you know, uh, Arts Fest over Anne Marie. So I, I listed uh, two people playing. There's probably about uh, 20 more. Wow. Well, dude, everybody's so, going to go have to check out the Chronicle to go click on the link to yeah. go find check it out. That's right. Yep. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're getting to that point of. You know, fall now, so there's going to be a, a good mix of music going around. You're going to start moving from a lot more inside things as the outside gets cooler. So, yeah, you're right about that, dude. You're right about I that. I look forward to that from a tuning yeah. standpoint. I, I, know, I know one of the big <laughs> things that we have coming up that's going to be outside is uh, happening in a few weeks in La Plata, which the Chronicle will have a story about that soon. All right. Ooh, stay tuned for that. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, dude, let's, that's our cue. Let's jump into the news. All right. Uh, in Calvert County this week, multiple crashes on Monday on Route 4 near the French Frederick Fire Department and also on Dares Beach Road, which left cal parts of Calvert County with no power and no Internet. Even on Tuesday, some residents were complaining about intermittent or no Internet. The Chronicle has re reached out to Maryland State Police Prince Frederick and to Comcast, which has yet to respond to our uh, questions. That's just so be, uh, be on the lookout to figure out what the heck is going on here. Something's wrong. Yeah, something ain't right with that. Because everybody... Yeah, it's... Uh, you, you know, we, we had the, a big accident on Dares Beach Road. It was, I believe it was around uh, 3 a.m. Right. And road was closed down. They were saying it was going to be open. Well, the Nixle that came out didn't say anything about an accident. The Calvert County uh, citizen notification system sent it out saying there was an accident. Um, then people were saying it's only construction. It's, you know, I contacted the sheriff's office. They said this is an M MSP case, but it has to deal with a dump truck. I contacted MSP. They have yet to respond to me. I've tried to contact Comcast to figure out what's going on. They won't respond. So uh, it's a big kind of mess. Then there was a whole big thing about whether the Nixle alert for the one by the Prince Frederick Fire Department was actually the same incident because they're only about a half mile apart. But it turned out to be a whole other accident. Wow. So. Something strange there. Yeah, something's up. Yeah. Yeah, so, but I'll get to the bottom of it. Cool. I know you will, buddy. Okay. Uh, this morning, at, uh, Tuesday morning at, at 1.52 p.m., Charles County Sheriff's officials responded to Piney Church Road on, at Potsdam Drive in Waldorf for a report of a man lying on the side of the street. Officers arrived and discovered that the man was deceased and apparently had been hit by a vehicle. The victim has been identified as Tyron Dante Buckner, 29, of Waldorf and members of the traffic operations unit responded and they are handling the investigation they do not know what kind of car it is they don't know exactly what happened it's just that he looks like he was hit by the car uh, if anybody has any information about this case please call charles county sheriff's office at 301-932-2222 or if you wish to remain anonymous you can contact the crime solvers number at 1-866-411-TIPS uh, this week coming up, we have the uh, Maryland oyster season is getting ready to start, and Maryland has released their new season dates and the limits. The centerpiece of this plan is called for trimming 10 work days for commercial fishermen off the first and last month, which traditionally runs from October 1st to March 31st. It also calls for reducing the maximum daily allowable catch and for temporary closing as of some air areas to harvest. Recreational harvesters will be limited to only three days a week now, Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday, with no harvesting, harvesting after 12 noon and a 50% reduction in harvest limits. Well, I put something up for this uh, about this on Tuesday, Monday and Tuesday. Um, I'm going to be digging a little deeper into what exactly all of this breaks down to be. Gotcha. So, uh, a few events coming up this week. As you know, last week we had the uh, Charles County Fair. This week we have the St. Mary's County Fair, so be on the lookout 
on the Chronicle for any parking information and things that are going to be happening. That's going to be running from the 19th to the 22nd at the St. Mary's Fairgrounds in Leonardtown. Charles County's largest indoor snow bat, snowball battle will be at the Milton Summers Community Center on Friday from 6.30 to 8.30 in La Plata. On set, uh, Sunday at 6.45 a.m. in Prince Frederick at the Yoga and Wellness for All Center is the 13th annual Fall Equinox Sunrise Yoga. Uh, so there, be sure to check out the Chronicle's local event schedule, which is posted every Thursday morning at 8 a.m. I try to find as many events as I can on Facebook and stuff that's emailed in to me. Uh, I add stuff as I find it. I can't be everywhere, so if you go out to something and take some pictures and want to send them to us, we'll be sure to try and get those posted. Cool. All right, now for our fun stuff. <laughs> Southern Maryland Blue Crabs, we are in the last week of the season for them. They're sitting at third place at 32-32. and 32. They are six games behind. Uh, they're going to be doing the Long Island and um, L.A. this week at home. And in their final series is going to be Sugarland next weekend. Also announced this week for the Blue Crabs is Regency Furniture Stadium will be hosting the 2020 Atlantic Baseball Professional Series All Star Game. Nice, cool. Uh, Nationals sitting at 82-67. They are 10 games back from first place, and they hold a one-game lead in the wild card standings. If you remember last week, that was a six and a half game lead. Yeah, yeah. That's they will brutal. play the Marlins this weekend. The Orioles. I said it last week, and they did it. They broke the 100 loss plateau. They're sitting at 49 and 101, 48 and a half games back. <laughs> Will they hit the 50 marker? <laughs> uh, yes. They're going to play the Marlins this weekend. Thankfully, the season ends for them on the 30th, and that will be against Boston. Their last home stand is next weekend. Uh, NFL news, Redskins got demolished by the Cowboys, 31-21. to They now sit at 0-2. Offense did not look bad. Keenan has proved effective. The offense is moving the ball, uh, running not so much right now, uh, but the ball is being moved by the passing. Uh, defense, which was supposed to be the very strong point of this team, has completely just not shown up. Yeah, they're, they're terrible, man. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, FedEx Field is where they're going to be playing this Monday night against the Chicago Bears. We'll see. Go Bears. <laughs> the Bears. The Bears. <laughs> uh, NHL news. Capitals. Preseason started this past Monday. The Caps played the Blackhawks, beating them four to three in overtime. They'll be playing on Wednesday night, and they play the Black. I mean, sorry, they play the Hurricanes Saturday night. Okay. Area high school varsity football. Northern, Honeytown, Lackey, and North Point all sit at two and zero. Oh. Big matches this coming week, Westlake at Calvert, North Point versus Huntingtown, La Plata versus McDonough, and Patuxent versus Thomas Stone. And that's your news this week for Southern Maryland. Be sure to check out the Chronicle for all your state, regional, and local news, weather, and sports. You can follow us at www.southernmarylandchronicle.com and on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash SOMD Chronicle. Yeah. Damn, man. Brought the noise this week, Action man. Action packed. Action packed. Yeah, Hickey, that was fantastic, dude. You hit up all the points. That's what I try to aim for. <laughs> well, you're very accurate with your aim there, sir. Right. Uh, we just need you to dig down and find out what's up with this mysterious accident of Calvary. Yeah, it's kind of annoying me. Right. It's like, why are they so hush-hush about it? Yeah, especially since it was such a very big inconvenience. Did, yeah. it, did it involve someone high profile they're trying to protect? I've got some information, but I need to confirm that before I can even start Even going down that road. I, I understand, you. man. Cool. Well done, my man. Well done. Well, I, we'll check in with you next week, man. We'll see what's up. All right, guys. Have a great show, and I'll see you next week. All right, Higgy, man. Thank you, buddy. We'll see you. Peace. 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 There he goes. He's yeah. on the beat. He's on the beat. He is on top of all of the things happening. He is working hard. David Higgins, Southern Maryland Chronicle. Get man. over there, man. Check Seriously. Him out. Check yeah. him out. Give him a like. Follow him, man. We do. This is this is where we get our stuff. Yeah, it's homepage. As soon as I open up my internet browser, it's boom. boom. Right there, there it is. is. It's easy. Quick load. And I no. can't wait to follow this story. I know, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. It's like some X-Files. 
I'm going by the scene tomorrow. I'll take pictures. Yeah. <laughs> it's, they're going to confiscate your camera. And yeah. That, you know. yeah, you were never it. here. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'll check it out. I'm going to conveniently break down in the same spot. Oh. oh. <laughs> Investigative reporting. Yeah. I'll probably forget. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> we're just going to wait for Higgins to bring us the information. <laughs> Let him do the work. Exactly, dude. But dude, we got a couple minutes before we're going to get Sean on the Ollie's Barn Grill right. Soundstage phone system. So let's talk Spoon's Meal Review. Hell yeah. Tonight, man, it was awesome, dude. Yes, it was. Again, a guru. A, we had the guru staple, shrimp fried rice. Oh, yeah. Dude, you just got to get it. You have to get it every time. Yeah, every time. You have to have it. It's delicious. It's beautiful. It tastes good. The rice is done right. Go there, check it out. It's as right as the mail. It's consistent and accurate every time. You gotta have that. Exactly. Um, you had the the, the burger tonight. I had to. It's so good. And and it's got you going, man. Got yeah, it's, it's one of the newer items, and I just can't get enough of it right now. Dude, I went with the hamburger salad. Nice. Aha. See, yeah, see? I know. I see. There's a difference why I weigh 100 pounds more than you do. Eh. I went for the buns. I, I like going for the buns. <laughs> Yeah, guys do. <laughs> yes, I do. And the salad's a better option, and it's it's really delicious. The burger salad is fantastic. It really is, man. Yeah. Um, they're conveniently located in Rosewood, the Rosewick Shopping Center in Laplata, Maryland. I think everybody should just go out there and try it out, man. Yeah. Take a picture and send it to us. Yeah. I would love that. That would yeah. be great. That would be awesome. So that's the Spiel's, Spoon's Meal Review. Man. There it is. And the you know the temperatures the temperatures starting to settle in perfectly and that patio is open for business y'all that's right and it's football season oh man so get out there get out there and check them out the plate of maryland spoons barbecue man tell them the guru sent you that's it here we go all right brother we're gonna get the ollie's bar and grill soundstage spoon system cranking and someone say Ollie's. Yeah, pop one, man. Nah, I just did, brother. Exactly. So we're going to get Sean Kirkpatrick on the phone for Sean in 60 seconds, man. Give me some soothing tones. Sir. Soothing tones brought to you by the Southern Guitar Guru Show. It's Sean in 60 seconds. And it's ringing, dude. We're locking in the signal. The technology of, technology of the phone's cranking. Cranking. Cranking, dude. Good evening, gurus. Hey, Sean, what's happening, buddy? Oh, you know, just watching some Italian bass player do 100 bass lines in 12 minutes. Yeah, wow. love it, dude. What took him so long? <laughs> <laughs> bass player joke. <laughs> <laughs> what's up, brother? How are you? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. How are you? Man, loving life, man, loving life. Every opportunity to do this on a weekly basis, I couldn't ask for anything better. It is a pretty sweet gig, isn't it? Yeah, especially when we're spending time with people like you, my man. That's right, dude. Me? You got Mark Martinez on, on today. Come on now. Okay. You guys, you guys get to talk to like everybody around the world and talking to David and stuff like that. I'm just small cookies. Dude, you're part of the show. We talk to you every week. <laughs> if you were small cookies, we wouldn't do that. Right. Fair point. Fair point. Yeah. <laughs> my bad. Exactly. <laughs> Give yourself a little more worth than that, man. Yeah, man. Come on. Turn that frown upside down. <laughs> oh, I'm smiling. Nice. All right, now that we've made Sean feel better. Yeah. It's time for Sean to make us all feel better, better as listeners and give us a good old Sean in 60 second Second's. segment. What's your topic this week, dude? So the topic this week is communication errors. Wow. And uh, I know we talked about like uh, charisma and stuff like that before. Yeah. This is more paperwork side of things, as far as as far as bands go, and like communicating with your point of contact, having a stage plot, having a contract, establishing a pay ahead of time, or how the pay is going to work, things like that. Okay. Um, awesome. I had four gigs this past weekend, and two out of four of those gigs had pretty significant uh, communication errors. And they seem to be happening all the time now. It's like, they, I, I, and I mean, they happen pretty regularly in the past too. But um, I don't know if you've heard the joke from Spinal Tap where they put uh, like no no brown M or all brown M and M's right. in the in the green room. <laughs> yeah. You ever heard that in the yeah. contract? Right. Yeah. Right. Well, actually, touring bands. I don't know if you knew this. Uh, touring bands used to always do that to make sure that the venues were actually reading the contract to make sure that the Trust was up to par. The stage was up to par, and like they would put in fine print, like put 
all all no put no green jelly beans in the fucking green room. You know what I mean? Right. And if the green jelly beans weren't there or the um, brown M and M's weren't there, then the band wouldn't play the show because odds are they didn't do the stage to spec, they didn't do the trust to spec, and the band is liable to get injured on stage because of that. Because of the lack of attention to detail. Exactly. Wow. Wow. That this is a great topic this and everybody a... needs to listen up. Yep. So dude, let's go into it, man. What do you got? Well, it became, it, it, it got a negative stigma because a lot of people thought it was like a diva thing, you know, and people thought it was just like, oh, they think they're so, they're so important that they, that they can, you know, pick and choose which color M&Ms they get. They all taste the same, blah, blah, blah. It's not, it wasn't about the color. It was just about making sure the contracts were fulfilled to every specification required. Right. Because, and, you know, and, and, and unfortunately now it's like, to put something like that into our contract or even to demand a rider is like, oh, well, you're not playing here anymore. Right. Yeah, I'm like, flirting with that right now myself a little bit. It's it's working out a little bit, but you got to be very careful with it. Yeah, I mean, luckily, the, the, like the, the communication errors at, at our level are generally um, pretty minute. Like, yeah. we brought a sound guy to Caddy's on Saturday and nobody like we talked we talked to the to the point of contact which is the manager of the venue but the venue the manager of the venue didn't tell their sound guy so he ended up showing up too and so you know that was a wasted trip on his part and and that just sucks for him you know I mean it sucks for everybody when, when you know the, the information doesn't filter to the right locations right yeah. <laughs> um another one too is like uh we did a we've done shows before at um like like a big like stadium or like fairground stuff like that and the venue will send you this either hand-drawn map or like a printout of the gps or of spot or whatever on on the thing like a screenshot basically okay and the screenshot won't have a compass so you don't know like which direction is north and which direction is south so you're sitting there and they're telling you to go this direction like with arrows to this location you're like everything is a square this is a city like this doesn't make any sense. Then you got to sit there and try and get a hold of the of the manager, and it's just the little little things like that can can really kind of just make or break a show. Because I mean, with the directions, just like there, I mean, we spent thirty minutes driving around the venue trying to find where we're supposed to load in. Thirty minutes of time that we could have been using to set up and and get ready for the show. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah. there. That's on them, man. That is just that's irresponsible of them. And, and I mean, I'm, I'm kind of directing a lot of this attention towards the venues, but it's also the same for the bands too. Like, if you, if you have a, a sound guy at a venue who doesn't know who you are, if you're, if, I mean, just in general, if you're a band, you should have a stage plot, and it should be correct. It should be up to date, and everything should be correct on it, so that when you get to the venue, if there is a house guy, he can have all the XLRs ran, all the mics ready to go, and you just set up your equipment, and he just drop and play and you're ready to go you know you want to try to minimize as much setup time and tear down time as possible yep. and the safe plot is the most effective way to do that yeah i hope everyone's paying attention to that because anytime you have a gig if you can send that stage plot ahead of time it is vital like sean just said we do that all the time too and it is necessary to have a oh, stage yeah. I mean, plot there's there's been venues that won't even book you if you don't have a stage plot exactly <laughs> right man. yeah and it's something so simple here's our stage plot Right. Mm -hmm. And people ignore it. But this, this is a fantastic topic, though. Yeah, Sean, um, you're knocking it out, man. So, and yeah, another I mean, thing... It, this has been something that's been heavy on my mind. I couldn't help but talk about it, you know, especially with, you know, the, the clusterfuck that was this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> right. But let before we dive into that a little bit, um, when, when bands are communicating with people, um, yeah, make sure you communicate... And your grammar's right too, man. You know that's another thing. You got to come off right. And I think oh that, yeah, I, I mean, stuff that isn't that difficult, and, uh, and that is something that really like. I mean, I'm not a grammar Nazi or nothing like. Well, I used to be, but I try not to be a grammar Nazi anymore. But if there is a whole bunch of um, spelling mistakes in an email or something that comes from a supposed agent or manager or venue owner or whatever, it, I, I immediately delete it if there's. You know, because I mean, it looks like scams. It looks like I, I've seen scams before. If, if I mean, I, that was a topic from months ago. Yeah, we talked. Yeah, right. we talked about that. Right. But it is it is important, like Dan Harsha just said, to to come across in a very professional and 
as much as possible grammatically correct, correct. fashion. Man- manner, you know. You know, just to be professional. Yeah, it is really easy to get lost in that in that that rock star mentality where you feel like, you know, you you, you it, like the like the professional side doesn't matter. You want to just you know give off that image, but it, all, in essence, the rock star image is just that. It's just an image. Like it's exactly. just what you you. It's just your stage presence. It's, it's it's that it's that picture that you see on Facebook or whatever. Yep. But when it comes down to business, I mean, you got to be just as level headed as a guy wearing a tuxedo next to you. Because odds are the guy that you're talking to is probably wearing a fucking tux. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You're right, dude. You're right. A fucking tux. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's 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 so funny when you walk up to a guy and you got piercings and 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 a braided beard and a fucking shaved head and fucking this crazy shit going on and tattoos everywhere and and you know you can have a civilized and eclectic conversation with the person and it just kind of shows the level of professionalism that people are really looking to see yeah exactly so dude let, let's dive into this weekend what happened why are you, you you're pretty passionately heated up so let's talk about it what, what happened to you um well, I'm not gonna go. I'm not. I'm just gonna go ahead and just not say the names of the venues and, 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 and which 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 gig it was. Right, I mean, yeah. we know yeah. the caddy issue happened. That's not a big deal. That was a uh, whatever. One one of the other gigs we had. Um, <laughs> the uh, the client uh, talked to our agent and asked for a band for X amount of money for the event for for a set time between 11:30 and 12:30 band provides production oh. however on the contract it said the event time was 11 30 to 2 30 and so there was two different like we don't like the event time doesn't matter to us the set time is what matters right the event time the event can go on all day right but what, what, like when do we play that is that is the important information so after we, I mean, we discussed it a couple times, and it seemed weird that we were bringing our own production to, to set up and play for one hour and then tear down. And, and then, you know, was there another band that was supposed to play after us that was supposed to set up their own PA on the same stage? Like, it kind of, it kind of, it was a really weird setup. And unfortunately, in 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 the fact that it was our, it was, you know, we were very just flustered and didn't have much time to, to do anything about it. it um, we ended up doing exactly what the contract said i mean that's that's just the that's that's the way we always do things so it, it wasn't really like you know we knew it was, we knew it was weird but you know go by what the contract says it's always it's always what the agent tells you what everybody says you know it's just the way to do things um so we did and then we start backing up and and uh, the point of contact comes over and he's like hey oh uh, um what's going on and we pull up the contract says 11 30 to 12 30 dude Yep. Sorry. Um, can we get our check? <laughs> wow. Exactly. And so, yeah, he, I mean, he, he paid us and, and we rolled out and he realized it was his fault. That, and that it was, you know, it was it was in the messages. It was in the contract. There was like verbal communication between our agent and, and a couple of members of the band. So the guy just didn't communicate very well at all in that situation. And like... <laughs> whatsoever well, he learned something that day yeah but yeah, yeah stick to the contract i mean yeah and, and i mean it was really it was really commendable of him that he didn't know you know he didn't get mad about it he really understood and you know just saw saw the facts right in front of him like even if we like if we were incapable to were capable of it we would have totally stayed and played till 2 30 but the way that our schedule was set up we had to leave right after that gig because that's 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 what we coordinated right you plan around those things, and you you, you got other things to do. Right. Yeah, I mean, not all the time. Sometimes and... we're able to, you know. I mean, obviously we're we're able to do an encore or something like that. But I mean, you're asking for two more hours of, of music that was un, unplanned. Yeah. You know, Hannah had to get to a soccer game, and and Chris had to go pick up his kids. Like, right. Those arrangements yeah. weren't made ahead of time. Right. So you yeah. have to do that. So. That's why we have okay. communication ahead of time. That's why we have the contracts. That's why we have the paperwork and everything's done well right. ahead of time so that you know you can look it over and make sure everything's right yep awesome yeah. man what dude 
this was an excellent, excellent topic this week. I am just beyond happy that you brought this up because there's bands out there right now listening going, wow, dude, that's a great thing. We need to make sure that we don't make any mistakes. That's right. So, dude, this is spot on and this is perfect, man. Thank you, Sean. This is awesome. Yeah, of course. And, and another thing, too, I mean, you can go online and look up formats or like pre written contracts where you just fill in the blanks. That's it. That's what we and do. And send them off to, 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 to whatever venue you're booking with. As long as you have that, that document ahead of time, yep. nine times out of 10, you're safe. Exactly. And we did the same thing. We we did all that. We do the contracts. And we just recently, no names mentioned, uh, had a situation where the venue would not sign it. So we are not playing there. There it is. There it, it is. is. It's that, that simple. simple. It's that simple. It's that simple, dude. If you if you're gonna be a professional band and 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 offer your services, you gotta have a contract. And any venue that doesn't want to sign that, that's a sign to say don't play there. Exactly. I mean, that's a very strong sign to not play there because if they're not willing to sign a contract saying, "Hey, we want your entertainment for this amount of time, and we'll pay you this amount of money," like, right? You could go there and and not and walk and not even walk out with your own gear. Like you're bringing your stuff into their building. Exactly. They could kick you out and just keep your stuff. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. Yeah. I'd- at the end of the night, they look at you and go, here's 50 bucks for the four of you. Thanks for bringing all your friends that spent over $1,000 at the bar. Exactly. It's just, you got to protect yourself. Yep. So, Sean, you have freaking nailed it tonight, man. A lot of great so, points. Somebody out. learned something. <laughs> I, hope every, I hope everyone's listening. And I, I know the majority of people who are will be like, that's what we do. We do the same thing. Yeah. But if it can reach a few people that didn't know, or, or just start- this is great. Or I, I want to stress this to the guys that don't think they're good enough for it because they are. There you go. You know, that's the other thing. If you don't think your band's worth a piece of paper, you're wrong. You are worth a piece of paper. Mm-hmm. And you got to start. And you got you to gotta just draw a line in the sand. Because obviously, if you're an up-and-coming band, you have other work you do to make your living in life. Absolutely. So you need to draw a line and go, hey, if I'm going to step on in this field and play, I'm going to make sure I'm protected. Yep. And Right. Even if you're only making, you know, 100 bucks for the gig or if you're only making door sales, you need to have something to back you up on that. To at least get, that, get, what, get, at least get that. Protect yourself. Yeah, yeah, the venue's got security detail. You don't. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. And you're doing all the promotion. They're not. Right. And, and again, and if you're trying to play a venue and they won't sign it, don't play there. It's that easy. Say no. Okay, good. I'm good. I'm good. Then just walk away. There's t- we, plenty we, of venues out there that are looking for music. So right, yeah. and, and we live in the we live in the the, 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 the best area to find another venue. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a ton of them out there, man. So I love that word venue. Well, that's a that's a topic for <laughs> We're another day. Save that too. one for another, another time. Day. Yeah. <laughs> Is there some Latin meaning I don't understand? Ah, <laughs> uh, well. But what's a venue and what's a bar? That's <laughs> that's a show in itself for Southern Maryland, dude. So. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh. We've been <laughs> any we've been any, any bar that is willing to host a band immediately becomes a venue. Right. That's the way I've always seen it. Well, we've been hinting at this for a few weeks. We're going to get into it, but not tonight. But. Yeah. That's, oh yeah, man. Rack your brain over that one. We're going to talk about this. Yeah, I might have to hit you up during the week. Talk to you off air. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Cool. Hey, might wait, have to wait. Up spoons or something. Right. Yeah, yeah dude. That's all, what. We let's go do. ahead and meet up there, man. Let's just have a bullshit session. We gotta, I like the sound of that. Yeah, yeah we, we got, can sit out on the patio. Yeah, we got to do that. I'll definitely arrange that this week. That'll be cool. Hell yeah. All right, man. Hey, I'll be hey, looking forward to it. Be, be, before you go, where are you playing this weekend? Uh, this weekend, Friday, I'm off. On the twentieth, uh, so I'm gonna try and figure out what band I'm gonna go see. I'm not sure yet, so post your suggestions in the comments. Oh, um, there you go. All right. Make your case for having Sean to come to your show. There you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, Saturday night we're playing at Rockfish Grill over in Chestertown, and Sunday we're gonna do a acoustic thing over at Hunt's Tavern. So that's pretty local. If you're uh, nearby, come stop by, check it out. Cool. I'm All digging right. it. That's an awesome deal, dude. Yeah, that's like it right down the street. Yes, sir. <laughs> cool. All right, Sean. Um, appreciate your time this week. It's been an awesome segment, and we look forward to talking to you next week. We'll get dive into another one. 
All right, guys. Y'all have a good night. All right, brother. All right, Dave. From the Guitar Gurus, we say thank you. See you later. Peace. Later. He's out, dude. Crushed it. Absolutely crushed it. Yep, Sean in 60 seconds. Greatest topic so far, man. I love it, man. He really brought it, and it's a topic that really just resonates with a lot of us, and, you know, even me in particular, because what he's talking about is what I've been going through this year. Right. And he's dead on with it, so pay attention to that segment and listen to it. It's it, He's he's saying this for a reason. Yeah. Because he's seen the other side of it, and it sucks. Yep. It's, it's yeah, just your band's worth a piece of paper. Exactly. And that's, I can't stress that enough, man. And yep. if you're playing shows without it, stop. <laughs> it's gonna, you're gonna get burned, and you're then it. you're gonna have some hurt feelings, and then it's gonna be too late. So don't. Yeah, there's too many things that can go wrong there. Right. And I didn't even think about you bring all your equipment into a building, yeah. and they can kick you out and keep your stuff. Dude, everything you worked hard for to have you on your own and earn, you're taking it with you out somewhere with no protection or guarantee of it you're right dude. nothing mm. wow yeah cool i think we're gonna take a break we've sounds been, great we've been yapping for 46 minutes almost 46 minutes straight <laughs> dude one take it's been a it, dude episode 43 man That's what we do man one what, take this is awesome man dude the, <laughs> dude the standard guest part of the show was a, just awesome man so awesome. i can't wait to jump into the, the featured guest and do the guitar of the week two for tuesdays wow man a bunch of stuff to do left on the guitar gurus yeah all right dude we'll take a break we'll be back this is guitar gurus with dan and dan southern maryland's number one choice for music talk radio Hey, this is Audra from Taboo, and you're listening to the Southern Maryland Guitar Guru Show. You're tuned in to the Southern Maryland Guitar Guru Show. The only show that Chuck Norris is afraid to be a guest on. We see each other through different eyes. Dude, we're back from break. It's the Guitar Gurus with Dan and Dan, Southern Maryland's number one choice for music talk radio. Yeah. Dude, what a phenomenal break. Oh, yeah, absolutely phenomenal break. I know the best part about coming back from break is I actually get to drink. Oh. Yeah, that's popping yeah. it, Molly. That's popping it, man. I hope y'all are enjoying and having one with us tonight. If you are, throw up those things, man. Let us know you're with us. Yeah, let's do it, man. Because yeah. we're about to get the Ollie's Bar and Grill Soundstage phone system cranking. And we're going to get Mr. Mark Martinez from M Squared Custom Drums on the line to talk about his drum company and what he's doing down there, man. Awesome. So without further ado, I'm going to get it cranking, man. Let's I'm do not it. waiting any further. Give me nope. some soothing tones. Let's do it, man. We're going to show some drummer love tonight. Drummer love. Right, Mark Martinez, M Squared Drums, coming up on the Guitar Gurus. We're doing it. It's ringing. We're doing it. Hello? Hey, Mark. It's Dan from the Guitar Gurus. You want to go on the air? Hey, sure, man. Awesome. Awesome, dude. We're here in the studio. Got my co-host, Dan Albin, with me. Dan Albin, say hi to Mark. Hey, good evening, Mark. How are you? Hey, hey, what's up, man? Not much, buddy. Thanks for spending time with us tonight. Absolutely. My pleasure. This Our is, pleasure, buddy. Yeah. Our pleasure. Yeah, man. <laughs> this is good stuff, dude. Um, we are promoting the spot earlier today. You had fun with the with the post and did some um, graffiti and wrote scratched out guitar and wrote drums. I thought that's awesome. So thanks for that, man. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that was great. Dude, we're building buzz, man. We're gonna have some great viewership tuning in to hear Mark on this thing. So it's oh, gonna yeah. be awesome, dude. It's good stuff. So, dude, when we get, we have a guest on for the first time, we always like to jump into their backstory. So if you wouldn't mind, man, um, let's get to know you, man. Tell us what, what, how you wound up running M, M Squared Custom Drums. When, when did you discover music, and how how do you, how how close are to you? Hmm. I uh, wonder how far I can go back. Well, I mean, I started playing drums when I was probably about ten years old. I right. uh, wasn't allowed to play my dad's drums, so of course, naturally, that's what I started doing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, by the time I you know, 10th grade, I guess, in high school, I started getting into bands, and uh, I met this guy, Dustin, um, and he became my roadie, kind of a roadie, drum tech, right. for a band I was in, 
and we've pretty much been best friends ever since. So, uh, about the end of high school, uh, I actually got kicked out of that band. Joined the Army, started my life, all that good stuff. Me and Dustin stayed friends that whole time, and I, I guess it was about six years ago, I started sending him uh, Google images and links to people who were building their own stave drums. They're making their own jigs in their in their garages and home shops, and they were building these stave drums. And I kept saying, Dustin, we gotta get, we gotta get on this. Like this looks cool. I bet they sound awesome, and I want to build one for myself. So that's pretty much how it started. Okay. Um, at the time, he had just built a 40 by 60 garage slash shop on his property, and. Um, um, most of it was a wood shop. Well, half of it is a wood shop and half like mechanic shop. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we built the first shell. It sounded amazing. It was made out of mahogany. Um, like I said, all staved. Most drums are built out of plywood. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but what? they steam bend plywood around a mold and they, they basically glue the seam and then they cut the Pairing edges, as it's called, the edges that the uh, the head set on. Okay. Right. So these are stave drums, and um, first one was awesome. Um, it was a little bit out with measurements, so we built another one. We think we built three in in total. Our first three were like the first, you know, the first three. Okay. So from there, I called my buddy Joe Barrick. Yeah. and said hey you gotta hear this these things sound awesome um i was aware of what he was doing with sam grow at the time but i wasn't real familiar with their music or i wasn't and i wasn't familiar with that genre at all i was I, like pretty much anti-country <laughs> I, I got you yeah <laughs> yeah so um so he came over to the shop and checked some stuff out and he said you might want to take this we're having a show tonight in annapolis um, and I'll, I'll play it on stage. If you guys want to come, I'll put your name at the door or whatever. So we're like, cool. We took our wives, saw the show. I fell in love with the band. He fell in love with the drum. And I mean, it's pretty much, that's exactly the point it started that night when he played that drum. Right. So from there, we, re we figured out, all right, if we're going to get serious, we got to figure out building bass drums and toms and the full kit. And um, we wound, our second kit we built was for Joe Barrick, and we signed an endorsement deal with him. He signed an endorsement deal with us, and we made everything legal. And from there, he opened up for Kane Brown, and this was, I don't know, five years ago, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, 2014, maybe. Okay. Opened up for Kane Brown. Kane Brown's drummer loved the drums. And they were somewhat well known, but not nearly what they are today, obviously. Right. But uh, he wound up giving me a call and we talked out some details, worked some things out. And we built him a full kit and they called it the Batman kit. We had all the, powder, uh, the uh, hardware powder coated yellow. Um, they were black drums, they looked really awesome. Nothing like anything else that was on the market at all. Right. And um, he signed a two-year agreement with us as well. And uh, that that was pretty much the, that was the point where we started like really getting an attention. Right, yeah, man. So. Yeah, <laughs> it's quite a journey. It is. Right. <laughs> So you sign those two artists, and then it, it does the phone just not stop ringing? Um, I wouldn't say the phone would not doesn't stop ringing. The Facebook messages come in a lot, you know. Can you endorse me? Can you endorse me? That kind of stuff, and it's pretty much like funnel them into, you know, bring them over here, uh, send your press packs, and we'll, you know, we'll have somebody take a look at them, that kind of thing, and you know. I'm not gonna say they're all bad. Some good, and we've, we've endorsed a couple drummers. Um, I feel like the endorsement thing is like 
you get a few, you know, when we're in a spot that we're in, you know, you get a few and that's about all you can handle because there's only so many free drums that you can put out there for advertising, especially when a drum set, a full drum set costs, you know, five thousand dollars for, right. Um, right, not basic, but a stayed drum set. There's a, there's probably fifty hours, fifty man hours of work that goes into building just the shells, and mm-hmm. it's not including clear and you know materials and everything else. It's, it's pretty expensive, so out of pocket expense. That's kind of rough. Oh yeah. yeah, man, for any business, I get it. Yeah, I mean, but, but right? Yeah. So we don't, we don't, we also don't have to have like crazy, crazy types of tooling either. So the overhead is not there for like a big company that you, could, that you would imagine. Um, so that helps us out a lot. We don't have debt over our heads or. Uh, huge expenses and equipment a lot of our jigs are custom built by dustin uh he's a freaking master woodworker okay. and i'm i'm i like i'm not gonna say i'm a woodworker i can hold my own in a wood shop um you know <laughs> it comes to running the saws and stuff i can handle all that but when it comes to building jigs uh where you have to be you have to have angles within i think we get within 0.1% or 0.2 0.01% I'm sorry 0.01% accuracy with our angles wow. so when you're talking accuracy like that uh, as far as a woodworker you gotta be damn good you know what I mean yeah man <laughs> dude making jigs is no joke right <laughs> I get it man I, I know how it goes man dude but this is this is really cool Um, all right, now do you have a, a, a retail operation um, like, yes. So how, like, in so, a sense. So, so like to say, because I've got a lot of Southern Maryland bands listening, there's a guy that's in a band, you know, he's he's saved up his, his dollars and he's ready to get something special made. Is there a way he can contact you and then just say, hey, I want to get a set. What do I got to do? How how easy is it? Or you got a backlog? How You know, what what's that like? I mean, uh, the number that's on the Facebook page, we don't have a uh, official website which is kind of weird, but um, I, I basically run off of my phone number. I put the phone number on you know business cards that go out, and it's a lot of word of mouth. And you can contact me either by my phone or on Facebook message. I'm always looking at those, and um, we pretty much that's how we communicate with our um, with our customers, and then we talk things out. Usually, usually the price is somewhat of a deterrent most of the time because they're coming in thinking that uh you know it's it's a plywood chill snare and they're not and if you haven't researched stave drums specifically you know they're, they're a little pricey because of the man hours that go into it but what you're paying for is a solid wood product versus plywood product and well i'm going off on tangent a little bit but Pretty much, we, we operate mostly by word of mouth, right. and uh, you know, with our endorsements we got out there, and with uh, Broadway Nashville is helping us out huge, and not Broadway uh, specifically, but Redneck Riviera, which is John Rich's venue in Nashville. Mm-hmm. He seeked us out at we had a showcase last year in Nashville where he invited all these drummers. He see, he uh, he had his sound guy come to our uh, to our showcase and set and basically told the guy, "Look, I want unique drums. I don't want everybody else has Pearl and uh, Sonar. You know, they're all in the windows of all the clubs in Nashville." Right. John Rich had like this. The club he made is all like wood uh, countertops and like old looking stuff and really neat place and he wanted unique drums so the sound guy came to our showcase and loved the drums uh i guess he realized right away that that was what the john was looking for and we made the deal right there handshake and um uh, we have our the, the first well i don't know if it's officially the first custom drum company on broadway but if you walk up and down the streets of Broadway and look in all the windows of the clubs, you don't see anything other than Pearl, Sonar, maybe Yamaha kit, 
um, big, big name brands. So that for us is huge. Right. Those drums get used by 12 to 14 bands a day, seven days a week, you know, from 9 a.m. to 3 a.m. Uh, 3 a.m. that night. Right. All the time. And you want to talk about getting beat up and used and uh, uh, the ultimate R&D test is, is it for us. I actually have to go there uh, Friday. I'm driving up. Uh, well, tomorrow. And um, they have an issue with one of the floor toms. So it's like one of those things. Um, hey, they call me up. Hey, uh, you know, we got this thing with this little floor tom. And I'm like, oh, all right, I'll be there, you know. Uh, so I make a weekend weekend trip out of it. I go to Nashville and check out the kit. I'll polish it up, make sure everything looks good, and fix the floor tom. It's, it's not even broken. It's just like the hanging part. They don't like it because they can't move it around as easy. Uh, but that that club has helped us a ton uh, with exposure. So I I feel like it's working for us, and we're gonna keep going. With, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I, so I dig it, awesome, man. man. That's all. Aw- I just love it that you're a Southern Maryland company, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what makes it rad, man. Because we like. This is not typical, you know. You know, this is pretty cool. <laughs> right. It's really cool. Um, Thanks. Um, are you gonna try? I mean, so, so right now it's it's custom order build but build by kit. It, you're just taking orders kit by kit, right? Yeah, for the most part, we have a few in stock. Uh, we don't have full drum kits in stock, um, but we probably have I don't know a dozen, fifteen snares that we've used for either prototypes or just, you know, my idea or maybe some of Dustin's ideas. And we are like, you know what? No one's ordering it, but I know no one has anything like this. Let's build it and see what it sounds like. And some of them, when we go and do stuff like that, I mean, we put a lot of money into it and it's kind of hard to sell it for less than we paid for it. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? So, uh, it's hard to find a buyer that's going to pay, say, twelve, fifteen, eighteen hundred bucks for a snare drum. Yeah, as you can imagine. Well, dude, if 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 you're a professional and you want to be a professional and you want a unique sound, sometimes you just got to save up and go the right way. I mean, the same. That with, is very true. Same with that guitars. I mean, I know guys that spend seven, eight grand on a guitar. Yeah. So, I mean, there's yeah. a marketplace. Well, that's a guitarist. Which, <laughs> right, but there's a marketplace for your drums. I, I'm a convinced of that, and it's just drummers. Just if you want, you know, gotta seek it out and, and know what's up. Just like that club owner in Nashville did. He said, "I want something I, different." You know? I 100% agree with you, which is why we we shoot for the top. When we hit Redneck Riviera, you know, we we pretty much said, "Let." Uh, well, I, I won't even say that. The, this, the showcase that we did last year in Nashville was all about that. I contacted probably 50 or 60 drummers that I knew lived in Nashville, big bands, and told them, like, hey, we're doing a showcase. It's free. We're going to have all these drums set up. I want you to just come and fry them out. Right. And we had a pretty good outcome to that, actually. It surprised the heck out of me. Um, we had... Well, I was already kind of buddies with Sean Fuller from Florida Georgia Line, so he came. That was actually, we delivered his drum there. So he played the Super Bowl the night before, and we did it on like a Monday or Tuesday. I think it was a Monday. I don't know, it was Monday or Tuesday, because we knew nobody was playing Monday and Tuesday. Everybody plays Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, He played the Super Bowl, flew in town, got in his car, and came to our showcase, and we delivered his snare drum. Which was one of our signature whiskey snares. Florida so Georgia Line has their own brand of whiskey. We have our little thing that we do. We uh, soak the drum in whiskey and in an oak drum, and we burn it. And for the rest of the drum's life, well, for a while, anyway, when you open the drum up to change the head, you smell the whiskey. Oh, and it's, yeah. You know, it's, yeah, one of them things. So we, we've done that with uh, quite a few. It seems to be our more popular one. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, where I was going with that was we're trying to stick with those Sean Fullers and, you know, the guys that are up there on the top because we know 
they're looking for the best sound and sometimes money is, isn't an object most of the time it is and that's fine but it those people understand more than others that if you want really good stuff you gotta you gotta pay for it you know <laughs> yep pretty much man i dig it man i'm just excited to see what happens man um because what y'all are doing is special man it really is it's really thank you, thank you. It's, it's, it's it's unique it's special the sound is insane i was at the sam grow show earlier this year at the five south center and i came on this very program and all i raved about was the snare drum and i didn't know about what all the details back then i just came in i just heard the most awesome snare of my life nice that's awesome i was there too actually yeah dude i was dude it was insane dude I, i've never heard a snare like that inside inside a venue man and it was just it was perfect man it geeked me out <laughs> that's awesome there's a funny story behind that snare drum actually i built that for me it was one of those drums and i said you know what no one's ever built a well not many people have built snare drums out of ipe which is an incredibly wow. dense wood oh yeah we, it's used yeah. for decking right. or i don't know what else beyond that but it's it's super dense it has a janka rating of like 3500 if you know anything about wood yeah the, um yeah and um i built it for me and joe played it one day and he was like yeah this is mine <laughs> and i you know it, w it didn't go quite like that it was more like here try it out and then he pretty much said yeah you're not getting this back wow dude <laughs> but i'm good with it because it's in good hands and it's uh it's being it's being put out you know for people to hear so that thing's exactly. right dude that thing Thank right. You. Oh, whoa, man! I'm geeked <laughs> out thinking about it, man. <laughs> just, just that crisp, man. You know, you know, because that's what makes a snare is the crisp. And that, yeah. And that yeah. bitch was crisp, man. God, it was crisp. <laughs> so the the denser the wood, the higher the pitch. Okay. And okay. the softer the wood, like a cherry or um, mahogany, anything like that, it's gonna be a lot warmer, but it's it's gonna it's still gonna have that. Uh, it's gonna have a lot of bottom end actually so bottom end and warmer is your softer woods and um you know your real dense woods bubinga purple heart ipe they're gonna have a, a higher pitch but when you tune that a little bit under man it's got some smack to it mm. wow man now let me ask you this when you are getting wood for these um do you have a process that you have to age the wood before you start tooling with it or how does that work well no um well, if you buy wood that's green, which means it hasn't been dried, uh, most wood you buy is kiln dried. Uh, then you'd have to, you know, you have to age it, dry it. But all the wood we get is pretty kiln dried. Okay. It's rough cut because we want um, we want more wood to work with, which which also means we have more work to do to it. But uh, all our stuff's already dried, so that's never an issue for us. Nice. Nice. That's awesome, man. Wow. Um, I was going to ask you about the music industry, but it doesn't sound like you're like in store print yet. So I'll kind of like lax off on that one until <laughs> next time because it seems like it's total custom operation, which I know there's got to be some drummers listening tonight. No doubt there are. That, that are going right. to probably reach well, out. I mean, well, it's hard. It's hard. So back to the storefront thing. We tried it for a little bit. It's, it's hard to do that because if you're building a custom snare drum, you want to build it to what somebody wants. You know, the sound that they want, that's kind of our, that's our slogan is sound first. And that means more things than that. But uh, it's like we, we put out, um, I don't know, a, a Paduke, an African Paduke and a Maple Drum and a Purple Heart. And we put them in the store and it's like, uh, 500 bucks I'm just making up numbers 700 bucks and the purple hearts probably around a thousand bucks and somebody wants to somebody's gonna spend a thousand bucks on a snare drum they they would rather come to you and say all right I got this money to spend this is the sound I want I like that purple heart but it's not quite there you know I think that's more how it works so the the um, the storefront thing acted more like advertising for us to be honest I got you. I got you. I just, I just think, I figured there'd be someone that just is impatient, doesn't want to wait for the build, and just wants to get a unique snare sound in a day. You know. Sometimes there are, yeah. You know, 
I don't know. I'm just like I'm just jazzed for the brand. I'm just want to spin my wheels. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what can we expect in the in the future from you guys? What, what's what's plans now? What's happening? Well, um, since the Broadway thing is working out really well for us, obviously we're sticking that path and uh, looking at new venues opening up in Nashville. Um, and we're in contact with their owners too, so um, we definitely want to expand on that, especially being you know j- unique to that. John, not genre, but that area. Like Broadway, it's Music City, Nashville, you know? Yeah, right. And Broadway is the center of Music City where all the music happens. And somehow we snuck in there with all these other huge brands and it's working really well. All the drummers, I'm on like their forums for Nashville guys, like real close knit guys. And I all I hear all the time is Redneck Riviera's kids, what are they? You know, and, um, it's working really well so we want to continue on that path poking and prodding that the new place is opening up and seeing what we can get happening there um as far as bills um you know we got a couple joe barracks getting a new kit built um uh dylan turner with 81 runs getting a new kit built uh, we got a bunch of other stuff going some secret stuff uh let me think what else we have all right so we're starting to come up with a plan for more affordable drums okay. when i say more affordable i don't mean like we're going the plywood route uh we will absolutely never build plywood drums we will never put wraps on drums all of our stuff is solid wood with a painted finish on it or just a clear right. uh, we're just i don't know i think it's like our our thing it's just we are more wholesome and through to solid wood and that's how we're going to stay but we figured out ways to bring the cost down a little bit so i think that's going to help us in the, in the long run um be able to put some drums out there that are a little bit more reason, reasonably priced but still the same build quality we're still building the same specs um uh, same wood same uh grade wood and everything else we're just figuring out some ways to bring our cost down I got and you. and that can be as simple as building more than one at a time, you know, which we usually do anyway. But when you build one at a time, you waste all those man hours on one drum. It's like we could have built seventeen of those drums, and we we wouldn't have multiplied our man hours by seventeen times. We would have multiplied by like three times, you know. So it's little things like that that we're gonna. I think we got a good plan. Let's get ready to get started. That's cool, man. It's exciting to, to, to be on, you know, be at, at that phase of, of business life where you're actually still getting processes put in place to make the product better and, and yeah. more, more cost efficient. You know, that it's, yep, yep. Don't, don't ever get lazy that way because then the passion of the business kind of will fade away too, man. You know? Oh, no. That'll never happen. Nope. <laughs> if if <laughs> something goes out, if we finish a shell and I find something, I will literally stop on that shell and break it in half. I don't care. I don't care how much we put into it. I don't even care how much the wood costs. If it goes out, if it looks like it's going to leave with a defect, it does not leave. You're right. Wow. I love it, dude. The custom, that's a, that's buying custom drums, man. Yeah. <laughs> Dig it, dude. But dude, Mark, you've been a fantastic interview tonight. We hit all the points I think we need to know about M Squared Custom Drums. I'm sure some listeners will reach out and, and see what they can do, man. Because, uh, uh, dude, they're beautiful. The drums are just beautiful. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, and and the snares are phenomenal. I, I'm the god, man. People should just go buy snares, man. Just awesome. Go, they are go. pretty fantastic. I have uh, my practice kit in my basement, and I think I have like ten shells lined up whenever I, <laughs> whenever yeah. I. Did nice. feel like did, did, a couple a couple of them are actually koa and that's one thing i wanted to talk about and get a chance to talk about oh, we to... build drums out of koa wood which is extremely rare extremely hard to get your hands on but the the beauty of koa is it's got the best musical properties and that's why you see like prs and all these other you know top brand guitar manufacturers the most expensive of those guitars have koa wood Am I correct? I'm not. I'm not a guitar uh, right. guru, right. but yeah. 
that, that's, Am I correct in that? There, there's a variety of tone woods that certain guitarists play for certain tones, but Koa is at the top spectrum. Okay, good. I'm glad I got that right. Right. <laughs> so. But so we got a hold of some. Actually, it was actually PRS uh, Paul Stock. Oh wow. And yeah, and we got a pretty good amount of it, enough to build probably I don't know five or six drums. And let me tell you, those things are beauties. They don't go out as loners. Right. I bet, man. See, that's what I'm thinking, man. Maybe y'all should be known as, you know, just having, you know, different snare woods. You know, d- d- the dimensions of the snare, do you have different dimensions or is it one size? Oh, yeah. No, all kinds of different dimensions. We have piccolo snares. We have, you know, eight, nine inch deep snares that are, those things are monsters. They're my favorite, personally. Wow. Um, you know, uh, 13, 12s. You know, we've done quite a bit of sizes. Wow. So, yeah, so you, over the years, I would just keep making extra of one of each size, and then eventually you'll have all the different sample sizes. <laughs> yeah. And, and then, then you can really get people dialed into it, man. This is cool. Yep. All right, dude. So before we let you go, we have our signature question, and we know sure. that, we know that you've been in bands back in the day. So this is actually going to be a real fun question. Uh, we okay. we call it best gig, worst gig. You can answer in any order you like, but you got to answer both. What do you got for the gurus tonight? Oh, best gigs. Can I do it in the perspective of a drum builder? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Well, our. Hmm. Our best gig that we landed was by far Sam Grow and Joe Barrick. Uh, by far. He has helped us out immensely, and we love him for it. Um, on top of that, you know, I talked about the Redneck Riviera thing for a while, Nashville, Broadway. That was pretty awesome. Uh, John Fuller with Florida Georgia Line. Well, now I'm naming three. You meant best. I best would be a number one, you know, Joe Barrick and Sam Grow. You sure. hooked us up. All for right. sure. Okay. Uh, worst gig worst gig more like worst build okay that's cool um started off awesome we uh we were we had Kane Brown's drummer Kenny Dixon at the time and Kane Brown kicked off or announced he was doing a monster energy tour and we were like oh my god we got the perfect idea we are gonna build the drums uh, and have the monster logos in them. We're gonna get like, you know, we're gonna cross brand with monster. We're gonna get all this exposure. It's gonna be so awesome. Right. So throughout the build, we brought, we like, I, I don't know how short of a time we did these drums, but we were working day and night on these freaking drums. Uh, we got them finished. They were perfect, perfect shells. The finishes turned out amazing, which Everything was airbrushed by uh, my buddy Joe Ewing, who lives in Pennsylvania. I just want to make that, you know, give him a little shout out there. But he does amazing work airbrushing. Did these drums, had them put together. Awesome. We did like photo shoot with them and everything. Um, Shipped them out to Nashville to SIR or Soundtrack or wherever Kenny was uh, practicing. He unboxed them. He loved them. Posted all this stuff about us. So awesome. We were in contact with Monster Energy, um, and then we had, you know, Kane's full support and everything. And the shitty part about it is, we didn't get any backing from Monster, like any cross promotional stuff. And we were pretty upset because we we, we we thought we had this in the bag. Like this is going to be the thing that's going to blow up, and you know. <clears throat> but it was it wasn't only that. It was, uh, you know. Just return on investment, number one. Right. Uh, we also had issues with when they went on TV, uh, like Ellen went on the Ellen show and they pulled out the drums and they were like, no, you're not putting monster logos on the set. <laughs> and we were like, what? Ah, oh, so they had to play a backline kit for that one. Uh, another show, uh, they had UPS ship the drums, UPS freaking dropped the bass drum, oh. cracked it in half. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it was, it was kind of like our unicorn build, and that was definitely our worst experience. We thought it was going to turn out so well, and it's kind of like, I can say flop. It was pretty cool. It was a lot of TV exposure and stuff, but kind of crappy. <laughs> yeah. 
and the, and, the, and life goes on, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, we were fine, but you know, yeah. it's kind of a bummer. Yeah, yeah, man, I know, man. It, get your expectations set for one thing, and it doesn't come close. It just hurt. It, it's like a knife, yeah. man. Ugh. Yeah, <laughs> kind of crappy. Yeah. Wow, that's cool, man. Well, I appreciate you pulling back the curtain at night with us and talking talking shop and talking drums man it's pretty cool no problem man i can talk drums 24 7 <laughs> i dig it man i love it well well give us some uh insight here to the listeners mark on how to uh reach out to you so uh we have our facebook page we mainly operate out of um facebook instagram that kind of thing my name is Mark Martinez. You can call me personally. My cell phone number is 301-529-7560. Or you can just send us a message on any of those pages and we'll, we'll get back pretty quick. Nice. There it is. Now, how? What? where else can you actually contact the operator owner directly like that and just say, hey, I'm interested? Right. Yeah. I are. mean, Dustin runs the shop. I am pretty much like the PR and the endorsement guy. So, wow. artist relations, that's what I call it. I got you. Yeah, man. it's a beautiful thing, man. You guys are doing a hell of a job over there. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, man, this is awesome. Well, dude, from from the Mark Martinez, from the Guitar Gurus, we say thank you for coming on tonight, and we'll be in touch again, all right? I appreciate it, man. Thank you. All right, buddy. We'll see you later, man. Peace. Bye. Bye. Good night. Wow, dude. Awesome. Wow, man, that was cool. Very cool. <laughs> dude, Southern very Maryland, cool, dude. Man. Southern Maryland has its own custom drum shop. Yeah. And a very successful one so far. Yep. Getting the big axe. Got Joe Barrick with that crushing snare, man. Yeah. And his kit sounded phenomenal. He's got the drummer from Kane Brown signed up, you know? So yep. they're doing it right, man. Doing you, it right. I mean, you just, the product is real, man. And it's cool. Absolutely. Real cool. And we thank him for coming on this program and tell talking about it. And yep. All the drummers in Southern Maryland, if I was you, I would be saving my money and just give me a custom kit and buy it one time. Right. And have something unique. Yeah. That, that's what I would do. I mean, supporting the local community, too, at the same time. That's right, man. But obviously, it's a phenomenal uh, setup uh, to be able to put your kit down there in Nashville. And have it played, like he said, 14 times a day, and it holds up. Right. That tells you everything you need to know. Yeah, well, I mean, the quality's there, dude, and the sound's there. Yep. Sounds first, yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. That's good stuff, man. Wow, dude. So, dude, we're going to trans- transition right into the Island Music Guitar of the Week, man. What do you yeah, think about hell that? yeah, man. Let's get it on. Let's get that thing done. You saw the pictures. That I thing's did. awesome. I, I want to see the guitar. I guess I have to go down there and check it out myself. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, dude, this week we got the Gretsch Electromatic G5420T hollow body in beautiful candy apple red, man. It's awesome, dude. It's tuned that'll make them swoon. Oh. Yeah. So, check this out. Once you tear your eyes away from this Gretsch Electromatic's hollow body's eye-popping finish, hardware, and appointments, you'll find a serious instrument packed with premium features. These include a bound rosewood fingerboard, a vintage voice black top filter tron pickups, and an adjust matic bridge in the legendary Bixby tailpiece. Yeah, it's a nice tailpiece. Dude, that's why I took that one. <laughs> that's why I did that one yeah. photo like that. You know, so everybody can see it, dude. It is iconic when you see it though. Right. So and what's nice about a Bixby it's got that subtleness to it. Dude. Right. It's so cool. So cool. Okay, so it's got a three-way pick pickup switching system, just like a typical guitar, but then it's got tone and volume knobs, and you can adjust the different volumes for the pickups. So you really got to analyze the knobs and really fool with them to really figure it all out. Yeah. It's pretty cool the different tones you can get with it, man, because I was doing my whole Jazz Sundays thing. This was perfect for that, man. Really cool. Really cool. Gotcha. Dude, but um, the pickups, let's talk about that real quick. The bright and spanky black top filter tron pickups. Gretsch, Gretsch uncovered a set of Baldwin era filter tron pickups with incredible punch and twang, perfect for the electromatic. They reverse engineered those special pickups to create the set of black top filter tron humbucking pickups you'll find loaded in this one. With their robust character and trademark cut, 
the black top filter trons keep you ready for everything from rockabilly to country to blues and classic rock dude this is to say the gretz is a legit jazz box too <laughs> there it is all right so Dude, I implore everybody to go down to the store and check this thing out. Check the whole Gretsch line out, dude. I've been sleeping, man. Yeah. Dude, I've, dude, I've been sleeping on this brand, dude. They're awesome. Yeah. God, man, this, this past weekend was fun, dude. It was really fun. Um, Here, let's talk about the electronics real quick. Dude, they're, they're so flexible, all right? The, the exceptionally flexible electronics of this Gretsch is insane. It's insane. Uh, it allows you to pull off a lot of tonal tricks. The volume controls for each pickup help you create a perfect balance between warmth, bite, and brilliance when both pickups are engaged. The master tone control lets you fine-tune your sound once you've got the pickups dialed in. And of course, you can elicit sweet tone from the neck and, bri- bri- the neck and bridge pickups individually. Dude, it's <laughs> like I said. It's yeah. a, dude, it's the, one of those guitars when you demo in the store. You really got a demo for like 20 minutes to really, really hear it. Right. You know, it's not a quick shred at all. You really got to adjust some stuff. And, and spend some time with it. Yeah, dude. It's one of those guitars you want to spend some time with once you've got it dialed in. It just becomes fun. Um, let's talk about the big speed real quick. It's got smooth vibrato action. Nothing beats the character and vintage vibe that the big speed tailpiece adds to this electromatic. It's based on the original design created by Paul A. Bixby. The Bixby licensed B60 tailpiece requires no, next to no effort to use, making it particularly easy to pull off slow, subtle, and extended bends. Mm. You'll be able to bend into notes, give full chords, vintage sounding modulation, and, and single notes with a character that isn't attainable with other setups. Wow. So, so you gotta play with you know you gotta dial it in man this is a serious instrument this is this right. is not a beginner guitar <laughs> i'm just, that, that's right now you know you, if you're just starting out stay away <laughs> stay away you're not gonna be happy <laughs> but dude it dude this i had so much fun with it this weekend like i said once you dial it up to in, in your system it's cool real cool that's when the fun begins yep you just gotta spend that time dude and so let, here's the features at a glance. Well, well let's all just jump to the tech specs because that's what everybody wants to hear anyway. Yeah, let's just do that. All right, so it's a hollow body guitar. It's the electromatic body shape. That's Gretsch is known for. Um, this model was a right-handed model. It had six strings. It's got a maple body, gloss finish, candy apple red color. Yeah. It's got a maple neck with the standard U-shape um, neck shape with a 12-inch radius. Uh, the rosewood fingerboard, a neoclassical thumbnail inlays. It's got medium jumbo frets, 22 of them. It's got a 24.6 inch scale length. Uh, the nut width, here we go, another crazy one, 1.6875 inches. Wow. Um, it's got a new bone nut too, so that's nice. So you don't have to worry about the nut wearing down. It's got the anchored adjustomatic bridge with the Bixby B60 vibrato system. So that's the whole. That that's the whole vibrato of the guitar. It's got the vintage style open back tuners. And they they work like a champ, dude. They tuned it real nice. It was easy to use, not a problem. It's got the black top filtertron pickups, one master volume, one master tone, and then two individual volume knobs for the neck and bridge pickups. Wow. So like I said, you yeah, really got to spend some time with the knobs and, oh, yeah. and, d- and dial it in. But, it, dude, once you figure out how it all works, man, it's really cool what you can do in a hurry. Um, it comes with some nickel-plated steel strings from the factory, 11 to 49. And that's the guitar of the week, man. That is awesome. Like I said, go to the store, check it out, spend some time there. It's not a quick play. If you don't, if you can just try it out for five minutes, you're really cut yourself, you're just cutting yourself short. You gotta spend you know at least 10 15 minutes yeah it's really adjusted to an amp it's a beautiful piece man but it's a fantastic guitar and that's the guitar of the week this week dude and it was awesome <laughs> super awesome dude thank you to island music for uh, providing the guitar of the week yeah it's really cool of them man i really appreciate them stepping up each week doing that for us letting us talk about guitars lets me research each guitar you know yeah like a detective like a duck <laughs> Yeah, and then and report back upon the facts, what we call tech specs. Uh, <laughs> but then, that, 
but it's fun, man. That, that's what the show is all about. Exactly. It's like education. Yeah. Yep. We're, we're trying to help. If anything, we're just trying to help. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the Guitar of the Week Island Music. You guys rock. And we'll be talking about them again next week with everything. Oh, Guitar yeah. Guitar of the Week. Cool. Well, dude, I think we're going to take a break. Get every get reset. Get Jason Mitchell on the phone. The Mitch yeah. is back. The, the Mitch, Mitch is back. back. The Mitch. The right. Mitch. The Mitch is back. Right. We'll talk to him. But before we get him up, we'll do the two for Tuesday shout out. I know everybody's waiting on that. We're, we're, we're moving it around. We're keeping it sporadic. And this week it's just a little later in the program. That's all we're doing. Right. Making you listen along. That's right. So, dude, we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back and just rock it out and see what happens. What do you think? Sweet. Cool. It's Guitar Gurus with Dan and Dan, Southern Miller's number one choice of music talk radio. Hey, this is Bong from Taboo, a.k.a. The Bonger, and you're listening to the Southern Maryland Guitar Guru Show. Broadcasting from our 100 gigawatt radio internet thing that plugs into something else it's WGUR the guitar gurus we see each other through different eyes oh yeah we're back from break it's the guitar gurus Southern Maryland's number one choice for music talk radio Auburn man what's up buddy yeah we are man we're up for bringing you the ultimate in the entertainment of the world of what we call Southern Maryland. Yeah. That's what's up. It's music talk radio. <laughs> oh, boy. That's, that's what's... music to my ears. Yeah, that's what's going down. We know what's up. Now we know what's going down. Yeah, dude, the show's cranking along. We got one featured guest left. But before we get to Jason Mitchell, a.k.a. The Mitch, <laughs> the we're going to we're gonna do the two for Tuesday shout outs. Yeah. So Dan Alban, it's all you. That's right. It's time for the two for Tuesday shout outs brought to you by the Southern Maryland Guitar Guru Show. Sponsorships are available, by the way, if anybody would like to sponsor this segment. That's right. It would definitely be uh, awesome if you did. Please. But without further ado, here we go. Episode 43, two for Tuesday shout outs. We've got Brent Robbins, JC Moore, Rob Blake, Tim Seiler, Sean Kirkpatrick, Lisa Watts. Rick Curl, Nutter Photography, Erica Randall, Cassidy Greer, Tim Elder, Angie Walker, Rachel DeLong, Trish Galliano, Millie Farrell, Mike Stacy, James Kuby, Jamie Cable, Patty Sr., and the St. Mary's County Arts Council. We are happy to do this list every week for you. Thank you for the love and support. This just shows that you guys are out there because without you, we are not here. So thank you, everybody, for that. Awesome, dude. That's real cool. Awesome. I love the Two for Tuesday segment. Man. Me too, man. It's all about it's all about the listeners and the support. That's right, man. And we love them. We're bringing on the band so they can get to know them, man. That's it. It's cool. Well, dude, I think it's time we're going to get the Ollie's Barn Grill soundstage phone system cranking for the last time tonight. Yeah. We're going to get the Mitch on the line and see what's up in this world, dude. Oh, yeah. It's time for the Mitch to make his return. Jason Mitchell. Coming at you here on the Guitar Guru Show. Dude, it's ringing. Let's see if we can lock in the signal. Let's see if we can get him in. I hope he answers. Yeah, me too. Man, haven't heard that line in a while. <laughs> ha ha. Come on, Mitch. Oh, he's killing uh, me. He's being dramatic. <laughs> Jason, it's Dan from Guitar Gurus. You want to go on the air? <laughs> yeah, you know it, buddy. Dude, it's the Mitch. Yeah. We got the Mitch on the line, man. Motherfucker. Wow. Man, this, is a, this is a family show here. Yeah, you might have, you might have to take that out. Nah. nah. There's no FCC here. <laughs> Dude, it Dude. is awesome to have you back on the show with us, man. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, we love you, man. We love you being on. We love you being a part of the community. You're just out there grinding as always, man. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying. You are. You're succeeding. Yeah, dude. One day you're, no, you're in Ocean City. The next day you're Southern Maryland. And it's like, wow, man. You're just driving. Just that week was rough. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I bet, man. I bet, dude. Well, dude, um, 
Let's see here. Let me get the paper out. Dude, oh, no. What's, what have you been up to since last we spoke? Fill in the audience, man, because we've seen your name pop up everywhere, and everybody just, you know, give us a little insight on what's happening with the Mitch. Uh, uh, since we last spoke, uh, it's pretty much been everything. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, pretty much have played any, any place that I, like, was like trying to play like I got I got to play in Ocean City this year I got to play in a, in like the Edgewater Annapolis area this year so like I got to do all the things that I would kind of set out to do and then got some like bonus time in Virginia playing in some Northern Virginia venues and stuff like that so pretty wow. much just playing all over starting to work towards you know more personal goals on my like own music but I've been just kind of running around, having fun, trying to make the most of it since uh, I just hit my one year of really doing the solo pursuit on August 30th. That was my my one year mark for me. And then I'll hit 100 shows September 27th. will be number 100. So I'm pretty excited about that. That's, that's big for me. Wow. Congratulations on that, man. That's a, that's a testament to hard work. And that short amount of time, man, that's that's impressive. <laughs> well, I mean, I had a lot of help, so it's not like I was out there, you know, knocking door to door. Oh, I understand that. Yeah, uh, I'm just impressed by putting hundred shows together. But you I still mean, get up and go do them. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. I still did it. <laughs> yeah, I I got to. Uh, I went through my calendar, and I think I counted it out. I think it's going to be. If I don't book any more shows at all um, through December, which I will, but if I don't, then it's something like 123, I think, for like calendar year of January to December. Wow. So I think next year I'm just going to kind of try and keep it at that number because I think if I do any more, it'll be way too much. Like on top of doing the apprenticeship for the union and full time work and the reserves as well. I mean, there there were four to five show, show runs. I think like a week, at least like every other week in the summer. So I don't want to do that all the time. I need my own time too, so that I can at least try to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, you. you can sleep when you're dead, man. Get all that <laughs> you know shit. what? I I've been going with that theory, but when would I have time to watch uh, YouTube videos on new music gear? Right. I guess that's true. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Good point. <laughs> so. so yeah, dude, you're out there grinding it, man. I still we haven't found anybody that that's deserving of the trophy. So the trophy's yours at the moment, brother. <laughs> yeah, how many months running? Uh, somebody else needs to. Tony needs to come and take that mantle from. Yeah, yeah, I know since since February, March, right? Yeah, yeah, February. Yeah, uh, I think it's February. Yeah, I think it was yeah. February. Yeah, dude, right. dude, 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 we have, dude, we haven't found anybody else that's more grinding than you, man, and. Just hearing you do all the stats about how many shows you played in the calendar, it's like I don't think anybody's ever gonna come close. Oh, I, I, I don't, I don't think that's true. I think somebody else is gonna come along, you know, just trying to get up there that is hungry and wants to do it, and wants to see where it's gonna go, and they'll, they'll do it. And I mean, if anybody, you know, ever comes up to me and asks for any, any advice or anything like that i always you know push them to the same contacts that i had or you know tell them some of the same advice that i was given hopefully anybody that ever you know talks to me i can at least steer them to somebody who knows better right that's yeah. cool you're you're a wise young man wise young man. <laughs> <laughs> i i don't necessarily agree with that okay so you're a wise old man <laughs> oh, oh yeah, very old. Right. So, so where can, where are you playing at this week? Next week? What's up with that? What's happening? So this week, I am playing Friday in Edgewater at the Pier Oyster Bar and Grill, which used to be Coconut Joe's, and then on Saturday, I'm playing Dockside in Deal. Nice. And those are two that I really like. I mean, 
the pier is just a beautiful venue right on the water same with dockside they both got great food they both got great drinks they both got phenomenal staff so i'm just excited for those the week after that let's see i got my calendar up Nice. <laughs> so the week after that, on the 27th, I'm at the Rex with Chris Luckett. And then on the Saturday, I'm at Happy Harbor. And then the Sunday, I'm at Lighthouse and Solomon's, which is another one of my favorite venues. That and the Rex. I mean, Libby over there at the Rex, the manager, she, she's so nice. One of the nicest people I ever have to talk to. That's nice. awesome, dude. Cool. That's awesome, man. That, there's some great spots that you're you're hitting up, man. If, you know, I, I definitely agree. They, you know, I've I've had the pleasure of playing. Every place I've played has been just the staffs are always good, the food's always good, the people are always nice. Yeah, I've gone into some places and I'm like, uh, I don't think these people are gonna like me, you know. I they don't they don't look like the the, the crowd I usually play to or, or, or you know you know, talk to so then as soon as I start playing music the next thing I know I go on break I have everything in common with everybody you know at least something there's always at least something everyone can get in common with and I you know sometimes I wish the whole world were like that right yeah no I get that man that's a good thing man it, it makes it all worthwhile to keep going out and doing it oh yeah yeah, yeah. for sure I mean the, the people always make it whether it's the staff just singing along or whether it's you know just one or two people I think one of the hardest transitions going from playing in Southern Maryland to playing anywhere else is that sometimes you get to these rooms where they are just there to get an after work drink and they're just there to hang out and they're not really listening to the music and the first person that gave me that heads up was Steve Nelson and he was like hey you know when you go there they they might not like you or they might not listen like you can't you can't get offended by that you have to just accept that you're there to provide a service and sometimes people just aren't there to listen and there's always at least one person in the crowd that is listening to what you're doing so I just look at that person they keep me going, and then I'll go and talk to them as soon as I get a break. That's cool, That's man. That's the way to do it, man. Yeah, man, definitely, dude. Yeah, are you are you play a song for somebody who showed up, and you say, well, I played an older song because you, you're an older dude. I thought you might like that one, so I played that for you. <laughs> I've, the only I'm time I've, I've ever been like, oh, uh, I played this song because I thought you might like that is, you know, for instance, if, there's, if I've been talking to somebody, and say they're a uh, motorcycle guy. Yeah. A lot of mo- motorcycle guys like, um, uh, now I'm blanking on the song because we're talking about it. That's how it always works. <laughs> right. As soon as you start talking about it, you blank. Stephen Wolf. Um, <laughs> Bad to the bone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that no, guy, um, he's, he's not going to like Bon Jovi. I'm going to play something else. It okay. go- it's the one that is Here I Am on the Road Again. A white there man. I go. White, yeah. white, white that song. Yeah, nice. I like that. They song. always like that one because I mean it's a you know it's on a, on a motorcycle. Yeah. I feel so stupid for not knowing the name of the song, but you know that's what uh, all this pressure does to me. <laughs> <laughs> wow, dude. All right, um, let's let's transition into this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, dude, what's the future looking like for you, man? What do you What do you got planned coming up? Recording sessions, original songs. I get geeked up for your originals, man. So what's up with that? You get geeked up for my originals? Yeah, man. I yeah, love originals. He, oh, he talks about them all the time. Well, you guys are getting geeked up for my originals. Uh, then I'm sure you're very familiar with a gentleman named Mike Dameron. Yes. And Mike Dameron and I had been talking and he wanted to get into the recording so we had talked discussed things done like a, a scratch track or two and then i hit him up i said listen man i really want to get some contact like content out there and i trust that you have my vision in mind for music and i trust that you know we're going to take the time to do it right so on november 10th i am aiming to release my first six track ep 
five of which I wrote previously, one of which we co-wrote. All right, cool. And it's going to be full everything. I mean, we're talking full production, electric guitar, acoustic guitar, drums, bass, vocals. I'm hoping to get some keys on at least one song. And I've been, you know, spending money to find the right equipment to put on this track, make sure it's perfect. That's cool. That man. is great, man. Is this the first time you're announcing this? Oh, yeah. Actually, it is. I've, like, told one or two friends, but that's now this is know. the first time officially in any kind of capacity said, hey, this is the day that I'm shooting for, November 10th. I want to release on all platforms and have some physical copies as well for sale. I'm, I want to have my first EP, six-track EP. I love it, dude. I the love it, man. Exclusive. We got the exclusive. Yeah, man. <laughs> now everyone knows that it's coming out. They're going to be looking forward to it. Oh, uh, you know, I hope so, because I, I remember when I started playing music, it was never about any kind of making money. It was never about playing anything that anybody else had ever wrote. For me, it, all, it was always about writing my own songs and putting my own songs on paper into song. So I'm ready for my music to be in existence out there with everyone else's work and be available for people when they come up and say hey do you have any music do you have a cd do you have anything on spotify i can finally look at them and say yes i do here's where you find me there it is that's man. it man i love it dude <laughs> that's cool man proud of you man yeah man <laughs> do it right man it, november 10th's coming though <laughs> it is it is <laughs> we got um we got about a month left worth of recording time I'm actually meeting up with them tomorrow, and we're supposed to start uh, tracking the drums. And like for the full, we got the scratch tracks done. Now it's just drums come and do the guitar stuff. Uh, his bass player Josh is going to be doing the bass tracks, so it should be great. Are you planning on doing a, like a release for this, like a uh, like a show? So I have a show that date. It's just out and. Virginia just happens to be um, and it also November 10th also happens to be my five year anniversary of playing guitar so oh. it's also the Marine Corps birthday so it just happens to be a bunch of these like really great dates that I was like you know what I want to do my release on that day because it's important to me there you go yeah I dig it dig it big time man yeah we got the world's biggest shovel man we're digging it so what, so what kind of, I like that. I'm, I'm taking that. I'm, I'm absolutely stealing that. Okay, you sure can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it's already stolen. Nah, you're all right, man. <laughs> I love it, dude. Hey, what about new gear? What do you got? New guitars? New amps? What are you buying? All right, so I, I overhauled my, my previous uh, gear from the last time we talked, which I had had that gear for a long time. So um, I just kept playing things weren't working out kept trying all these different humbucker guitars and i was like something's not right finally went and got a professional series usa fender strat and now that i'm on team stratocaster i not only have the satin lake placid blue one i also bought from island music the limited edition Olympic white one. And I just, I, they sound so great. And I'm playing those through a new amplifier. I'm playing through the Fender Bass Breaker 30R. And I'm actually getting Eric Cotton from Marlet Custom. He's gonna be building me a road case for it. So I can actually, you know, toss it instead of gently place it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, so I like completely nice. overhauled the, all this Fender stuff, which is really funny because when I went to buy my first electric guitar, I looked the salesperson in the eye and I said, I absolutely do not want to look at any Fenders, especially Stratocasters. <laughs> Welcome to the day. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, so you the don't irony think you want it, but you know you me. want it. <laughs> yeah, dude. I, yeah, well. Dude, it happens, man. You got the fender bug now. Can't fight this feeling. Nope. I do. I want. I want a Jazzmaster. I want a Telecaster. And when I have those, I think I'm good. Like, I want to have the Jazzmaster tone, the Telecaster tone, and I've got a set of Telecaster pickups from McSpadden guitars. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, I won them at a silent auction at the B Chord Bash. So I've got these really nice hand wound vintage spec pickups just dying to be put into something and you know, make some music with. I dig it, man. I dig it. I'm going to definitely do that myself. <laughs> All right. Hey, man. Well, dude, so you got two strats now, man. So how has it changed your plan? And, and what have you, what do you, I mean, talk to me about it, man. That's a big change. So it didn't really change my playing style. What happened was I was had this style and I kept trying to force it on these humbuckers because I just like humbuckers. I like guitars that just scream and face melt. But when it comes down to it, I'm a really rhythmic player. I'm not a lead guy. I never have been, probably never will be. So you know, when it comes to that nice, like, shiny, like, jingle, you can really only get that from the single coils unless you're, you're working some magic. So I'm pretty much just taking the tools out of the toolbox that I always needed instead of just trying to, you know, use a pair of clines as a hammer, which if you ask any electrician, it's perfectly acceptable until you actually have to do something that requires an, a hammer. So <laughs> I'm just, I'm just now I'm, I'm have these tones all on hand and on these professional series, they have a push pull and you can pull out the uh, bottom tone pot and it brings the neck pick up into any position. Right. So I love pulling that out and having it in with the, bridge pickup so i got the neck and the bridge at the same time and it just sounds so great like it's a really unique sound but it's still stratocaster but it still lets me be me i dig it man so everybody out there listening don't don't shit on strats strat will change your life they really will you know and and the reason why i'm gunning after jazz master is because it's similar but it's a little bit beefier so i think that's going to be my kind of middle ground to oh i really want a thicker sound sometimes that the strat's just not quite getting and i'm gonna i'm gonna try and use a jazz master to fill that i actually sold somebody a jazz master while i was hanging out at guitar center um and then i got offered a job but <laughs> I just, it, that happens to me all the time. I go into a, gu- a guitar shop and I'll sell somebody something, and then I'll be like, "Ah, uh, no, sorry guys, I just just hanging out." Right, but dude, um, whenever you get your jazz master, make sure you get it with that extra rhythm sir cir- the extra rhythm circuit, man. Don't. You know, I've been looking at the professional series, um, the the ones that don't have it, and I've owned one that had it before, and I never used it. So I'm thinking I might just try and find one of those on clearance or on sale or something. And then if I feel like I need the rhythm circuit, I will add it in myself. Good call. Good call. You can Especially since, have you tried the new V-Type pickups? They're fantastic. Uh, yeah, we've done, a, we've done a Jazz Master, I think. Maybe I haven't yet. You have not yet. That's because you've got yeah. so many of them already. Uh, yeah, I kind of like, I, did, I purposely kind of avoided that for a while because I got so many myself, and everybody that knows me knows that that's my deal. <laughs> so. Try them out. The uh, Fender did their overhaul on their series, and there's so many great models that are just available right now. I'm not sponsored by Fender, by the way, so this is completely non-biased. But the, I didn't like the V-types in the, in the professional series Stratocasters, but the V-types in the Jazzmaster are beautiful. All right. Fair, that's fair criticism. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, it was, I like it a little bit hotter than the V-types were giving me on the Strat. But they were nice. And it made the bridge pickup on the Jazzmaster actually usable. It wasn't so thin and then had like this huge thickness in the neck. It was actually way more balanced. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, dude, before we let you go, we want to ask you. Not, we're not. I'm sorry, dude. I'm getting off track. I'm too many ollies in here tonight. Oh <laughs> my god! All of them drank by Dan Harsh, not me. Sorry, by the way. I forgot about this. Hey, man, you ever gonna buy that pedal that you wanted to buy for me? Oh god! I yeah, I do. This I, do. I do want to buy that, but we never link. I'll, I'll send you a message, and you'll be like, "Yeah, this will work." 
and then one of us will forget her back out yeah. and then you'll remind <laughs> me later like you just need to ship it to me and tell me how much it costs for the shipping so i could just pay you via the interwebs whichever you prefer i have them all cash app venmo paypal whatever you want facebook even if that's how you want to go it but we i don't think we're ever gonna link up because you're always off doing your mystery man stuff and i'm running around trying to keep my life from falling apart <laughs> yeah well I'll, I'll hit you up man we'll work something out i just that, <laughs> that, that, now now i can get to where i was going before <laughs> yeah why don't you play some shows in our area maybe we can pop in on it well you know what i was actually in charles county last weekend on surprise but and i know i invited you guys so i know i'm sending you facebook invites i know you are i see them <laughs> <laughs> but i'm not gonna lie to you and say interested because i know i can't make it <laughs> well you've been the it. one it's the uh, other dan that hasn't been I know, the one I, oh, dude no. i know i got so much going guilty on. Yeah. i'm guilty dude i that's been a whole theme on the show man me trying to get out to see other bands i came all the way down to Leonardtown to see you <laughs> yeah, and then, and then, you, I, then I saw you again not not too long after that. Did you? Yeah, I can't remember where, but I know I ran into you. I ran into you at the outside the wire show because you were you oh. were jamming up there with those guys. You're doing a fill in. Oh, that's right. I was goddamn. I was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh the, when I messaged when I commented on the post about the uh, Stan and Joe's saloon picture. Ah. Uh. <sighs> Uh, one of my good friends had just passed away um, the Friday before that was taken. That was the Monday. Wow. And I went out to open mic to see Justin Moore over at uh, the poorhouse in Kent Island for his open mic. And then Mike Dameron and I went from there to Stan and Joe's. And, you know, I, I had been kind of sober at this point because we left our cars at Mike's. So I knew I wasn't driving. And there was a lot of Jaeger. <laughs> and uh, oh, wow. some other shots that I don't remember. And by the time I was on that stage, uh, it was all muscle memory. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, and you pulled it off, didn't you? You played great. I don't remember, but Mike said it was good. So <laughs> okay, well, nice. I'm sure that's that's all you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> that's tight, man. That's cool, dude. All right, so we're not gonna do the best gig, worst gig because you've already been on. So I just want to know what's the best show you you've done since you've been on the show. Uh, who? That is actually really tough. Um, I would say. Probably the, the most fun that I had was, it's probably going to be a three-way tie. Oh, we like a good three-way right. around here. So it's a, oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, there's three of us here. Oh. What are we, why are we wasting our time? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so in June, I played a show at Dockside and Deal with Rachel Harrison. That was a lot of fun. It was just a really nice, beautiful day in June, right there on the water, hanging out with one of my best friends. Yeah. Rachel and I have been pretty good friends for, for over a year now. Um, and then I would have to say the other two are this, not this past weekend, but the one before. Chris and I played at Ape Hangers. It was kind of dead like in the middle but at the end this, this party came for a birthday and we just had a blast it was a great time and then the, the actually the three the third one is this past sunday i played at the lighthouse in solomon's and i just i love the owners there we were having a we were having a chat before i played hanging out with uh my, my mom came by a couple of good friends came by my old soccer coach from my like 11th grade year came by we're going golfing this saturday now like it was a it was just a good weekend wow that's man. cool man. <laughs> that's awesome good it's deal. hard to have favorite shows anymore you yeah, know because really like you, you go to when you start going to so many different places and you start meeting all these different people there's like such unique experiences and no two gigs are the same so it's almost like I really enjoy them all, and then there's one or two that I really didn't have a good time at because of 
you know, something that probably didn't involve the show, like, oh, traffic was terrible, and I started 10 minutes late, and I just was really frustrated the whole time, but almost always, the people make it worth it, the music makes it worth it, uh, I've never been to a place that serves bad food, so, you know, that's always a plus. Yeah, that's, that is a plus. Especially, especially if they're comping you a meal, you know, for playing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, and you know what? The places that always comp meals always have some of the best food. So Sweet. See, everybody listening? You're booking a show? Get your meal, right? Don't show yourself on the Honestly, next year I'm thinking, about, I'm thinking about trying to – every time I book a show, you know, I want to, like, negotiate, like, a meal and a T-shirt. Like, I'd love to get a T-shirt from every place that I play. I've actually started buying them, but I think it'd be cool to just like be like, "Hey, uh, yeah, you know, this much in the t-shirt." <laughs> yeah, right. why, why not? not? It's that free advertisement for them. Yeah, and you know, go around represent these places and just be like, "Oh yeah, this this place. Oh yeah, it's a great place. It's out over here." You know. Yeah. Dan, Dan, I don't know. Uh, I think that'd be fun. Dan it's like Harsha collecting hats or something. Me, uh, stickers. Harsha just told me just now that uh, he'd be willing to trade that. Uh, you know, he'll give you he'll give you the pedal and a t shirt. Oh shoot. I just gotta buy the pedal and I get a free t shirt? Yeah. I'm definitely down for that. Yeah. See there you go. Let's see how That's hard fun. that is. <laughs> see? It's so easy. It's so easy. Now now get a hold of me. Watch. Yeah. If you want that shirt <laughs> Well, I'll be running around wearing this guru shirt like seven days a week, you know. I'll have to find time to wash it at some point. Okay. Nice. We're cool with that. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, as long as we see pictures of you wearing it and we don't have to stand next to you smelling it, it's all good. <laughs> I mean, if I wear this shirt, I need to see both of you at the same place while I wear it. Right. Okay. We'll see that. Yeah, we can make that happen. Come to Rocktoberfest, October 5th. Oh, you know what? I mean, what time are you guys going to be around? I know I'm playing a benefit October 5th, but it's like 12 to 4, so... I'll definitely have time, and it's at PTM, so I can come. Is you're, you're on my way home, and I love Island Music, so there you go. also not sponsored, but I love Island Music, so I would love to drop in. And I've never got to go to Rocktoberfest. I've always been at Reserve Duty, so this will be like the first time. All right, perfect. Well, come on in. Our October cherry is gonna get popped. Oh, awesome! Yeah. By the Gurus. Yeah. That. yeah. It's after that hours. Three way we were talking about. <laughs> I feel like we're moving into the after hours portion of the guitar game. <laughs> you started the portion with a nice uh, motherfucker, so No, that was harsh and it said that, not me. <laughs> I don't use I don't use that kind of body language on this fucking show. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, crazy, dude. All right, Mitch. This has been awesome, dude. We appreciate you coming on tonight, man. <laughs> we're having fun, man. Thanks for having me back. Who's number called me so i remember what to save it as harshness yeah not me uh, okay that's you know what i transferred phones that's why i don't have your phone number anymore there you ah, go. i lost like three or four contacts and i was like i swear i have i have dan a's number but who's calling me and i even searched the number and i was like it's not showing up as anything just pick up, just pick up <laughs> and go hello yeah it. just pick up and go hello yeah. Worst case, worst case, you know, fuck with the person if you don't. Well, it's always it's those automated messages. They've gotten so out of hand these days. Like, hey, we're trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty. It's like, I don't even have a car. I take the bus everywhere. <laughs> Lord. All right, Mitch. This has been cool, man. Yeah, buddy, man. Thank you so much for spending time with us. Hey, thanks for spending time with me. Okay. Hell yeah. Yeah, man. We're going to go play some golf together, okay? Okay, yeah, just, uh, I'm going to learn on Saturday. It's my first time. Never mind. I've We're never not gonna, been. Never mind. <laughs> you don't want to teach me? Forget what I said. We're not going to go play golf together. All right. But I'm going to get really good, and then I'm going to challenge you to a round of golf. All right, we'll do that. All right, buddy. We'll talk <laughs> at you next time. All right, man? Peace. All right, have a good one. All right, buddy. See you. Bye. Bye. Yeah! There he goes, dude, the Mitch. Oh, how much fun is it having him on here, man? It's cool, man. It Real is a cool. great time, every time. Every time, man. <laughs> He's out there getting it. A lot of shows, listen back if you couldn't remember them. 
you know, he's got plenty of things coming up. Plenty of things. <laughs> I'm having too much fun now. I know, man. Lots of shows. Like you said, he plays 125 shows that's a year. Insane, you can catch dude. him everywhere. So. Dude, that's awesome, man. Yeah, not bad for a solo act, man, playing it's like that much. every third day. Yeah, and it's not just like, oh, I'm just going to go here and here. He goes here, there, and everywhere. Right. So. Grinding it, dude. Check him out, Jason Mitchell Music. Yep. On Facebook, I'm sure you can find him there. And His band Lincoln Day, Lincoln's Day Off. Yep. He's still doing that. So it's going to be awesome, man. So check him out. We'll go on, man. It's awesome. That's it. Cool, dude. Dude, what a show tonight. What man. a show. Wow. Dude, I'm blown away. Another two hours worth of programming here. Absolutely. Content going to be available, man. So it's awesome. Every week. Good. Let's say thank you to all the sponsors. Yep. Ollie's Bar and Grill, supplying the beer every time we pop a top, that's popping an Ollie. That's right. Shout out to them. They power the phone system here, too. That's the Ollie's Bar and Grill soundstage phone system. Well world, done. The world class phone system. That's right. Um, we got Island Music doing the guitar of the week. And we got David Higgins with the Southern Maryland Chronicle hosting us a page on his website, too. Yeah. So, big time. Check out the Chronicle. Make it your homepage. Go there for your news. Um, that's what and I got. Spoons tonight. Barbecue. Oh, Don't forget about Spoons. Oh, man. I know. Spoons Barbecue with the meal review every week. Yep. Delivering us the, the food. It's here every week. It's delicious. And it's just awesome, man. Yeah. Man, so many sponsors, man. I'm sorry, man. And there's room for a few more. Right. Exactly, man. Just growing the show, man. Growing the show. Yeah, man. I'm looking forward to this for the premiere this week and see what, who's there to chat will go on man it's kind of cool yeah let's do that um you know hopefully with these uh we've had a lot of new listeners here lately the last couple weeks which has just been exciting uh, i look forward to seeing more pop up you know on a regular basis right we're on the verge of 6500 let's get there by the uh, let's get there by the weekend right that's, that's what i'm saying come on hit the Guys, like button <laughs> tell your friends tell everybody right and um dude start next week we're gonna have rocktober fest bands on yeah it's we're coming gonna... up start next week there it is stay pay attention to the post coming up about who's coming on this week but next week's show is gonna be awesome oh yeah big time so we look forward to that man it's gonna be cool yep got anything else alvin i'm spent my man me too dude there's not I'm... much else i can provide here tonight me either i think we hit all the points on the on the head and i think we're good man let's, let's rock on out this piece all right guitar gurus with dan and dan southern maryland's number one choice for music talk radio see you guys next week <laughs>